What up? What up? What up, Thick Boy Crafting Crew? It's your boy Belton, Flash Daddies, and no queens and everything between. Gather round. It's a new league, baby, and she's a crafting league. The boys are excited. The uh, spirits are high. And uh, I've got a video here that has been long requested by you guys, and that is how do I make currency at the start of a league? Or sometimes the question is uh, phrased as, you know, Belton, how uh, can I start to do what you're doing, um, you know, the same tactics or whatever, if I have a very low starting point? Now, obviously, these things kind of overlap. Obviously, the start of the league, where it's it's equal opportunity playing ground. We all start with nothing. So that will cover both bases here. In the past, I've hesitated to do these because my concern was that, uh, you know, when the markets evolve so quickly at the beginning of a league, with the amount of inflation coming in and people, you know, transitioning so often, and sometimes things will go four or five X in a single day or half a day or whatever. Uh, and it's really hard to just, um, you know, with any concern for sort of like a editorial guidelines or, or standard of uh, of care, I suppose, with that content, recognizing that there's a fair amount of people that listen to what I say. Um, this is a, it's a difficult position to be in where you don't value extract the entire market. Um, as well, obviously, the first couple of days of a league, I, I myself am often very, very busy. And as well, um, you know, one of the chief complaints viewers tend to have is, you know, they watch a video and despite disclaimers, uh, warning of this, uh, probably 20 or 30 times a week, I see somebody complaining that, you know, they followed what was in the video and they didn't have the same results. And so therefore it's a scam video. Um, you know, when I buy something at like two divs, sell it at like 10 and they buy it at like eight divs and sell it at six. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I suppose you don't go, uh, <laughs> you don't go for a ride in the YouTube comments expecting to come home on a longer bus. I guess, uh, that, that probably, probably explained pretty well. Nonetheless, I digress today, uh, to address this and hopefully to the, uh, uh, happiness or, or, or joy or surprise or hopefully you guys like this basically <laughs> tldr my words aren't coming to me right now uh we are going to be doing probably my most requested thing ever and that is bada -boom, bada -boom, ba -boom, 50 ways to make currency at leak start now before i jump into them most of you guys know uh, i tend to try to play the game in a different way than other people um this league i, I didn't clear my atlas until probably a month and a half or two months into it and uh, that, uh, as of late, at least in recent leagues, has been relatively um, consistent in, in terms of my behavior. So uh, because my chief currency-making strategies for myself typically do not involve the Atlas, at least in a large part, um, and also because I think that's probably one of the most heavily covered things that, you know, I don't need to dogpile on to the, the opinions of people who know better than I do or just to, you know, throw my, my hat in the ring simply to get a couple of views from you guys. So what we're going to be focusing on today um are a bunch of different strategies that i have done in the past now bear in mind that does not mean that they will necessarily work right now which actually quick tangent brings me to another point one of the reasons to has i've hesitated in the past doing this is that markets are inherently dynamic because they are contingent on player behavior and player preferences of course things like patch notes and uh, tangible changes can have a, a direct and material impact on how certain uh things will trend or go in, in the markets but um you know it, there might be a very popular streamer playing uh, a different archetype or a novel archetype and a bunch of people might think it looks cool and follow him or something There's, and you know that accounts for a surge in uh you know a play style or an archetype that hadn't occurred before uh that kind of stuff happens all the time and it's not really something you can account for not to mention the league mechanics tend to be a, a big question mark prior to going into them obviously you know they give you a teaser of what it can potentially offer and, and maybe some some rough um, guideline or outline of how the league mechanic like sort of works but never once have i played a league where like the full you know the full understanding of it was uh developed right away and so because of that there's lots of things lots of moving parts and so it's it's quite difficult but uh before i do jump into these uh do please bear in mind these are today's video is going to be 50 different strategies five zero different strategies that I use at the beginning of leagues uh, to make currency, and not a single one of them is going to involve mapping. So the purpose of this video uh, is to highlight the multitude of ways in which you can find different opportunities. Because there are so many of them, I have only actually written out one sentence for each one, or sometimes it's just a couple of words. So rather than doing my usual, you know, in-depth, I spent eight minutes and kind of show you thing, today what we're going to be doing for this video, I'm literally just going to say what it is I do. I might give you a sentence or two as to what that means. Uh, for the guys that are Patreon supporters, also, I suppose, time for a message from our sponsor. Thank you. Uh, what's up, guys? Uh, Patreon.com slash Belton POE. 
uh, setting that up last week. Had a bunch of people sign up for it. Um, super grateful for that, guys. It really does help out a lot. If you want some extended content, so for this video here, as I mentioned, we're going to be going over some things quickly. If you want in-depth, step-by-step breakdowns on how to do each one of these things um, in more of a long-form written content, or just to get in touch with me or have access to my notes and my strategies as they're unfolding in the league, uh, you can check that out on the Patreon. If you go back a video or two, uh, there is actually a video fully uh, explaining that. Um, it has uh, been going great. So thanks again, guys, for the support. And uh, again, if you do want a deeper look on this stuff today, um, I believe I'll, I'll link it in the description. So uh, yeah, thanks a lot, guys. Back to the program. Already, already, already. Chad Capitalist Belton passing it off. Um, now, <clears throat> sad Kami Belton sharing his strats is back onto it. So yeah, today, guys, we are going to be talking about the 50 strategies. Uh, and again, it is going to be relatively rapid fire. Um, it'll be talking about specific um, implementations of strategies. Um, and I'm just going to give kind of a, you know, a topic sentence for each one to, to explain what it is and sort of briefly how to do it. Um, you can probably ask in the comments in chat below or on the YouTube video and people can explain if you are confused or again, check out my discord. Uh, if you're not a Patreon member and if you are a Patreon member, I will post full written explanations for each one of these. Also guys, if you are just a regular YouTube video, give this video a, a thumbs up and a subscription if you do enjoy it. And let me know in the comments if uh, this is something that you find useful because I actually, uh, I locked myself out of my apartment the other day um, and to pass time while I was trying to get a hold of my landlord, I just started writing things out on my uh, notepad or, or what's it called, uh, iNote or I notes, maybe, whatever the iPhone version is of that. Uh, and it was 253. I wrote down 253 different strategies uh, in the time I was waiting. So this is, again, only 50 of them. If you guys enjoy this, if this video does well, um, and, uh, you know, you guys appreciate it, whatever it is, let me know in the comments, and uh, I can make another one. Still a few days till the league starts. And uh, so, yeah. Um, oh, I forgot to mention the, the biggest part of this. The reason why I am doing this this time instead of not having done it in the past leagues is because I realized if I release a video like this ahead of time, A, there's no value extraction on my side where there's a conflict of interest. B, I don't have to uh, defer, like, you know, I don't have to stop doing what it is I'm doing uh, at the beginning of the league to, you know, spend four hours making a video or whatever. C, uh, there really is no excuse now. Um, if your, you know, stated intention for uh, many of you who have uh, asked for this stuff uh, from me over the years um, is to is to know what I've been doing or to have some record of it. Um, you know, you can't. I understand why people feel this way, but you know, coming in to stream two months into the league and well, I can't do this. I don't have this and this and this and this and this. You know, so well, how many hours have you played? I played sixty hours and I have two divines. It's like, well, you've made you know you've made an error at some point if that's the case. Um, so. Hopefully this can help people. Uh, I'm not trying to rag on anyone, by the way, but at least a lot of the times what, what prevents people from succeeding in the game are these like mental barriers they put in front of themselves. Either, uh, you know, they try to set goals, but are not honest with themselves about their willingness to accomplish them. Or, um, you know, they set unrealistic goals or they um, just think that they can't do something because it's, you know, it's not habituated or ritualized yet. Um, and, you know, a lot of the time, the things that may seem complex or seem like these grand chase pursuits or items, they're really actually just a series of uh, very, very simple processes. And so hopefully, um, if nothing else, this video can help people get over that hurdle that might prevent them from doing so. Uh, again, I'm not trying to evangelize anyone here. You guys play the league how you want to. At League Start, I tend to do a little bit of map or whatever it is as well, right? Um, have fun. That's always going to come first and foremost. But if you are curious as to what I do to uh, make my moolah, we are going to be uh, diving into that now. So, uh, right, I think I've given the appropriate preamble. Let's get into it. Da -da -da. 50 ways to make currency quickly at league start uh, outside of maps. So that is, again, the topic of focus today. Number one. The Void. This is actually something I have not done in the past. However, it is something that was updated with the most recent patch notes. Uh, GGG does not... Like, the words that GGG uses are always very specifically put into things. You know, on Endless Misery, the old Discharge Jewel, when it says, cooldown is, or when it says, uh, you know, is means it's absolute, right? If it's got, like, more, more means something different than increased, right? And one of the things that GGG always does, if they move something from a, you know, like a world drop to a boss drop or something from a very common thing to a greater tier, there is a reason that will correspond with that. Um, 
An example I can think of is Garish Power when they uh, when they changed uh, Unique Jewels, right? The Garish Power, which actually I think might even be on this list. Uh, it just used to give a unique jewel, but there were a hundred different unique jewels, many of which were super common and not very uh, expensive. But they they winnowed down the the pool of uh, unique jewels, and uh, Garish Power became fifty times as powerful and as valuable as it was previously. Uh, the Void is this card here, guys. As you can see, I've got a few of them there. Void just gives you a random thing. But as of this upcoming patch, the Void will uh, only be dropping off of bosses. And uh, again, I can't state uh, specifically what it is that that is going to um, uh, entail in terms of how it will come out. But maybe keep your eyes peeled for that because, again, GGG tends to not do these things accidentally. Uh, and moving it from like a global drop to a boss-only drop uh, pro likely will have some implications. When the, when the new patch goes live, uh, uh, the reason I bought a bunch of these is just so I can turn in 50 or 60 or 100 of them or whatever right away. And so obviously I'll pass that information along to you guys then. Um, so that one was a bit of a speculation, but uh, I just wanted to get that out the, out the way uh, right away. Okay, number two, uh, Reforge Influence Boots. What you're going to be doing here, um, it can happen on a multitude of different uh, boot bases or influences. Typically, what you're going to want to do is get either a two-tone pair of boots or a um, fugitive pair of boots. Uh, and if you put either the cheapest, you can either buy the cheapest Conqueror's Exalted Orb, often it's Redeemer or Warlord, and then you're just going to come to the Horde Crafting Station and do Reforge Influence. The Life Force is very, very cheap at the beginning of Leagues, and often if you get uh, those boots into Hunter specifically, uh, because of Tailwind and whatnot, uh, you can get a couple Divines for them, or at least double, triple your money. Basically no effort at all. And, and the base type, you can you know look into that uh, uh, as, it, as you see fit. Uh, this number three, uh, similar to number two, is uh, Reforge Influence on Belts. Belts tend to be a little bit more specific um, because the the more popular ones are usually Shaper, I believe, and uh, Hunter. Uh, on Hunter, you've got uh, Percentage Attributes. Uh, you've got uh, uh, to do uh, Cast Speed, Movement Speed, Percentage Life, uh, I believe Chaos Damage, and then Shaper is the one that has the cooldown reduction. Um, now, Belts, you, you do want to cap your, your spend on those because... The vast majority of people are going to use them as sort of a transitional item um, on their way to either a headhunter or mage blood. So for myself, I, I kind of you know use that as like, a, all right, well, if I know that this is not going to be someone's final piece of gear, right? That that means that there's probably somewhat of a, a mental or a, a purchasing cap in the mind of people buy one, unless it is with a build that has a very specific need uh, and it can't use a mage blood. Uh, what comes to mind right now is uh, ward loop. Ward loop used to not uh, be able to run them. So, um, but that's another one that you can do quite easily. As I mentioned with uh, the, the number two one, um, if you get a STG and Vise, which is because those are for almost every build, the uh, best in slot. However, actually, uh, I, I didn't factor this in. This is kind of like 2.5. GGG just announced that they are changing Mech Alarm belt bases, Mech Alarm, um, to now have one socket. Uh, and why that's actually very interesting is because belts. Uh, can have war cries on them. So like level 22 intimidating war cry or cry or whatever the fuck intimidating shout It can actually be on the belt now if you have the uh, socket on it So if you're using the new socketed belt uh, the new the new jewel called the arms, right? Uh, that will actually apply to the skill on the belt So you can actually automate war cries simply by using the new belt base putting a war cry on and putting the new gem in pretty cool interaction I don't think battle uh, battle mages cry is one of the uh, uh, belt mods, so mm, that probably would have been the most useful for most people, but uh, do do take that into account too, because I'm sure those will probably go for uh, a decent amount at first uh, when they're not uh, when that crafting tech is not uh, widely uh, known or used yet. Um, and then for the other ones, uh, yeah, what you're going to be looking at if you're not doing a belt like that, or if you don't need the regular gem, um, Stygi and Vises are really like almost universally the best in the slot. Uh, the reason why belts tend to have a good margin is because the Stygi and Vises um do not really ever drop with an influence on them uh because they're tied to abyss and so what you're going to want to do there similar to the boots you're going to want to put on the cheapest um conquerors uh ex exalted orb again usually redeemers or warlords and then just reforge that influence until you either get shaper or hunter uh then you can just buy the cheapest either shaper belt or a hunter belt that has either the t1 cooldown reduction or whatever um you know influence mod you want to and you can even awaken those together too sometimes the dual influence bases are worth a, a bunch more as as a point of reference uh, i would i would still investigate the actual prices on these further so don't just take the whatever's listed here uh at, at its word but if you go to base types 
Um, and this will update, obviously, with the new league. Um, you know, you'll be able to see that it has the influence types here. So, you know, you can click that. Um, and again, instead of just reading this, do, do make sure you go into trade because uh, this is updated through the API, which is a little bit slow at times, and especially at league starts when the markets are moving so quickly. So, uh, yeah, give, give that a check for sure. All right, um, number four. Uh, one of the things that I look into, and this is something I do actually right off the jump, uh, number four, number five, and number six, in fact, are all pretty much the exact same thing, so I will explain all of them together. And that is to get item level 84, uh, Cluster Jewels. Uh, cluster Jewels, typically for any build, they're not used until roughly like, you know, level 90 or whatever, because they don't, people don't have the points for them. Uh, and so for the first, you know, like one to five, sometimes even, to, you know, seven, eight, nine days, uh, people just kind of neglect these. Um, now, item level 84 ones are important because they can get 35% increased effect. And uh, so the 35% increased effect is very good for anything that is scaling um, the, the modifiers on that jewel itself. So uh, typically it's going to be 12 passive jewels, um, with the exception, of course, of the 6% RMR jewel, where the 35% increased effect makes it 8% instead of uh, 6, or it would be 7 with a 25%. Um, with the other ones here that you'll see, so minion damage, bow damage, spell damage, whatever, uh, what you're going to be looking for, as you see, these are all 12 passives um item level 84 so for bows for example you can get three percent attack speed eight purse or eight strength uh you know uh 10 flat life and 35 percent increased effect so you end up getting 10 points because two of them are jewel slots so 10 points with four attack speed you know 13 flat life 10 strength and uh it's a, you know that's very very point efficient although with the adorned uh uh existing not as much as as, as they used to be uh the same would be uh said for uh, the minions or the reservation clusters. Uh, you can actually craft these relatively easy too, especially the mana reservation ones. Um, again, because we have a ton to go through here, I won't cover that specifically here, but uh, I do actually have that cataloged in the past, the past or again, you can check on the Patreon. So the next one we like to do is uh, crafting plus two amulets. I actually have a full uh, guide on this, uh, so do check that out. It's uh, Belton's The Many Ways to Craft Plus Two Amulets. Um, most people understand one or two different ways. There's actually about 30. Um, and it has to do with the how many prefixes, suffixes, which ones, blah, blah, blah. Uh, in general, though, the basic premise here is that uh, Life Force is incredibly cheap early on in the league. Um, you can buy plus one. So look for an amulet on the trade site that has plus one to all skills that's clean. Fracture it with a, or sorry, not fracture it. Split it with a Fenimal Plague Arachnid. Um, and that will, even if it's a six mod, it'll split three, three, um, you know, as long as you don't have three prefixes so that you've got one open prefix, at least with the plus one, all skills. Uh, if you have that, that's the only condition that you need to have. If that's the case, then you can turn that into a plus two in about five minutes. And because life force is very cheap early on, uh, typically, um, that is a pretty, uh, you know, low risk, almost zero risk. And, um, a reasonably high reward you can usually sell them for several divines uh, sometimes more depending on what gem type it is and what other mods are rolled with it so plus two amulets is another thing i like to do um <clears throat> and as you can see here as well uh, number eight on the list is splitting over modded plus one uh, all skills that is actually exactly what i was just talking about um although it is worth noting that you can if you don't even want to craft the plus two amulets uh if you were to do that exact same thing you get a six modded plus one amulet, so plus one to all skills. Uh, and if you just split it so that there's less mods on it, people will pay like four or five times the price. I remember doing this one league where, uh, you know, if you got a, uh, like a six, so there's three prefixes, three suffix, plus one all skills, it was like 20 chaos. And if you could get the plus one all skills is the only prefix, it was like four divines or something. And so all I did was just go and buy <laughs> buy these 20 chaos ones, split them with Phantom Plague Rack, and, and if it's six mods, it goes three and three. So... You know the one that has the um the plus one all skills it's you know going getting one prefix two suffix is not uncommon so i made it made a, a good amount of money on that um although i do recommend in general going for the plus two um however you know you do have to pay attention to what builds are popular um and as well since i was doing this a ton this is not one that i employ like super super commonly these days um because uh this is not the reason but something to consider uh is that um more amulets have come that you know they've got that i can't remember the name of it the dragon fang or whatever that gives plus three um and some other things like that 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 uh might merit consideration um okay number nine uh turning in bad uniques three to one this is a pretty obvious one that i think most of you probably know about excuse me a sec um oh yeah i'm sure some of you also noticed that my webcam is great today uh chat was complaining about it earlier 
but that's not why it's gray it's because we're saving all the color for our commentary let's go boys let's go boys um yeah the that's and that's that's my explanation i'm sticking to it but yes turning in bad uniques three to one it can actually be quite lucrative uh some of you are probably familiar with this with like venters rings um but there are a ton of different things you can do that with as well um the uh oh my god gladiators plate um brass dome is a good one um uh, i'm blanking on like i'm not gonna scan my mind for all the things here but any I, I, all you need are three uniques that are not corrupted uh so just three clean versions of unique if it has a mod on it a roll that is very valuable and it's not rolled well right often like uh if something has like a one in five range to it and only the very high one is is you know sought after like in the case with uh brass dome right where it's the max res the ones that are like you know one or two max res they're like 20 chaos and then you might look at the one that's five max res and it's like five dips Right. And so you just buy the 20 chaos ones, sell them three to one. And, uh, you know, obviously they still have to go through that, that variance again. But, um, that's a pretty simple calculation mathematically to see if that's worthwhile. Um, and even if you're not going out and purchasing things to do that, do, do keep in mind that you can do that even if you find them yourself. Um, next one, investing into one passive voices. This is something that I have done pretty much every league I am able to. Um, and this, you know, that obviously is contingent on how much I am spending on mirror crafting at the time. Uh, if we take a look here, and this is something that you are going to notice uh, pretty much ubiquitously across every league, Voices is one of the things that appreciates pretty much the most stably and steadily um, throughout uh, throughout the course of the league. Um, this is a pretty uh, universal uh, experience that you're going to have here. Um, as I mentioned, most jewels actually do experience this as well. In fact, I, I should probably uh, show you a couple of these, uh, these value curves here, right? So um you can see like later in mid league because the the, the end of sorry not to keep doing tangents but for this league because people realized at a certain point how much currency was actually coming out of it um you know you're gonna see for pretty much everything that you look at for affliction league people will see you'll see a big pe uh, pinnacle like that or a peak right and then people realize how much currency is actually dropping and the fact that they're they're paying more now in the league than they are in standard and things like that and so it kind of like drops down a little bit this is not something that would be typical in, in an average league though uh you're not going to see like these giant kind of bull runs up and then these like you know that kind of looks like a mountain right typically you're going to see appreciation curves that are pretty steady uh ir irrespective of that though uh, as you can see here the the starting price of these was 400 chaos and uh at the worst so like at the the p or the lowest part of the valley that you have at the end here uh it is 4600 so that's still you know 11 and a half times your principal but buying this in the first week right if you were to sell that uh one month later you would be getting uh close to 30 to 1 30 to 1 just for the base type right and so uh as I mentioned with jewels, a lot of the time, it, it's not necessarily even to do with the fundamental use case. It's simply because people neglect thinking about them because they don't have the points yet, right? Because jewels uh, obviously require a fair amount of points and people tend to put those off. Um, so those are, uh, there's uh, like a, almost always an opportunity there. Uh, boo -boo -boo. Um, and then, yes, as I, so as I mentioned too, with the, uh, with the voices, that just sort of gets magnified to the nth degree. Um, this is one that, because I was such a, uh, a big discharge player for so long, uh, I would love to grab these early on. Typically, um, in the first couple of days, maybe first week, you can kind of get them in like that. Uh, I think the cheapest one I ever got was 60 divs. Usually, I would try and get them around like 80 to 120 divines. Uh, in, mo in most leagues, they mirror the, like the, the price of a mirror. They tend to follow that exact same uh, like uh, time and price curve, uh, like on XY axis time price. Um, however, I do think that they're probably going to move outside of that and uh actually excel a little better than mirrors do these days uh simply because of the adorned being added um and also th the you know popularity of things like armor stacker and whatnot that uh they use a, a ton of jewels so yeah that's it that's another thing to keep your eye out for um what was the next one? Oh yeah the original sin scripture this was this was one that i did earlier last league i bought a bunch of them for 120 divs i had three of them and i think i sold them for like 700 or some shit like that um so you can take it here the original scripture this is the one that can be run uh, in sanctum to get a original sin you can see they were 180 divs and at the highest point they were 200 and or sorry this is 180 chaos but this is price of chaos right yeah sorry price of chaos so 180 chaos which would have been less than a divine 
and uh, you know, even after what's that, one week, two week, three weeks in, they're you know, uh, what's that, 15? Uh, okay, that's 150 divines after three weeks. At the highest point they got to, it was 234,107 chaos. So that is, what's that, like uh, 1,100 divs? Over, like, we're basically a mirror in that mirror range, right? So if you were to buy that early on, you literally could got 1,000 to 1. Now, that's obviously a bit of an outlying situation. However, it's certainly not, uh, you know, it's not uh, going to be out, uh, out of the cards that uh, people uh, will neglect these. Um, not Maybe not entirely, but they will certainly be very very cheap early on um you can see that there's a giant if, if you look at a trending when any one of these graphs yourself later on sometimes you'll see a trending uh like an up uh a, an upward uh trending path here that's like this is at like you know a 45 degree angle if you see a situation like this where it all of a sudden just goes what it's usually because there's like a streamer or a reddit guide or something like that that mentions it or mentions a, a you know a cool way how profitable it is or blah 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 so if you do see, again, this a giant sort of anomalous spike, uh, do be conscientious of it uh, because there's probably some sort of catalyst that is causing a surge at that time. Um, and uh, in most, not if it's right at the beginning of the league, it's probably not going to recover. But if, you know, if it's anywhere around the halfway point or later, it's very likely that there'll be, um, you know, a correction afterwards. So yeah, that, oops, sorry. That would be, what was that, number 11. Uh, number 12 is going to be triple synth items. Um, in general, uh, if, if I were to summarize the philosophy that a lot of these investment things have, is like if you were to look at a build guide for an average build, it doesn't really matter what it is, and they tell you like the priority, right, the order that you should be focusing on to get things, do the complete opposite. Um, <laughs> and I know that might seem counterintuitive, uh, but everyone, like when you go purchase the things that nobody else is right away so like triple synth items double corrupted items uh jewels things like luxury uniques like fuck it, uh like original sin or whatever right you are going to be buying those at their their lowest demand generally speaking with their highest supply because of how high the player base is and you're also buying something that people are going to transition to with demand very 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 reliably you know that these things are going to become more popular which means you are buying an appreciating asset at its all-time lowest price with its all-time highest supply and you know factually that the only fundamental or the only thing that can happen as a reaction from the market is for because of the you know its fundamental use case is that people are going to move into it now conversely if you look at something like a league starter which is why i don't play league starters um they tend to be things that you have like this mass migration of people towards something that is very conveniently set up at, at the onset um but you know they might even buff something uh, and this is kind of what I, I mentioned when i say with every buff there's like a hidden nerf that nobody talks about which is the uh the, the jacking up of prices right and uh, the difficulty you might have in obtaining crafted items or, or you know, the necessary uniques or whatever. But if, if you think, uh, you know, you can buy like 30 different cluster jewel bases for the same price that you can buy like a, a, a well-rolled six link and a decent, um, you know, like an amulet. I'm trying to think. I was going to say bow, but bows are, bows are outside that. Either way, but like just to get a six link in the first couple of days, some, sometimes, you know, like a, a two divines, three divines, especially day one. Uh, day two, maybe, you know, one to three, one to two. And day three at that point, you, you know, you kind of, uh, the market tends to uh, have a decent enough supply of them that they're not crazy, crazy expensive anymore. But either way, a lot of people will put their money into those or they'll buy immediately their build enabling uniques or whatever it is. Um, and the problem with that is that uh, the problem with the way that I see it, of course, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure many of you watching this do this exact thing. Don't be discouraged by it. If it's your plan, you have a good time, whatever but perhaps something to consider in the future. Um, you're going to be buying something that the reason why it is considered a league starter is because of how friendly it is to get into on the onset, right? How cheap it is to get into on the onset. Um, and, you know, typically what a, a low gear threshold it has. And I can tell you three things from those three things. Not a single person will, like, not one of those things is a good indicator of a build that will hold or gain value over time. Right. If you could have something that is well put together with very, very low gear ceilings, it is very likely uh, something that people will transition from. In fact, you know, a league starter build almost implies that because it wouldn't just it would just be your build for the league, not your league starter. If you're saying a league starter. It means that you're using it as a stepping stone to something else. And this is the problem that that creates. 
if everyone is playing this build at the exact same time of the league, when items uh, that, especially the items that are required for you know early stage builds, are at their uh, lowest supply, at their highest demand, and you're getting them for a build that everyone else is playing, but everyone stops playing at the exact same time. And not only uh, is there this influx of the same gear that you're wearing, because typically it's low entry gear, right? So it's it's fairly common stuff, usually not super expensive, right? Uh, like once all the people who are playing these similar builds gear themselves out in that, there's obviously going to be, you know, continuation and influx of those into the market just from natural drops. Uh, but then you almost have like sort of like a short squeeze on these where then all of the people stop playing the build too to transition to something else. So not only do you have this supply of them that are coming in and refilling the market, but you have all of the people trying to get rid of them afterwards. And so a lot of the times you are buying something at its literally, at, not even just in a relative sense, but in an absolute sense, it's the most expensive price in the entire league. Um, and the prospect of doing so is that you can then sell it in the future at its absolute lowest price, probably for a fraction of what you paid. Now, if, again, if you listen to the first situation, even though it might seem counterintuitive, <laughs> and I'll, I'll elaborate on how it's possible in a minute, but it might seem counterintuitive, but the inverse is also true, right? If you buy the things that people are going to need when they transition, you will be able to buy them at a fraction of the cost, and you will be able to know with absolute certainty that you will get that return in the future. If you can find ones that you can also use for your character, all the better. Uh, for myself, as you guys know, I love to mirror craft, so synth items are, would fall into both those categories. I tend to keep my eyes peeled for a variety of different synths that I know are valuable, that people like to craft on, even if it's a, uh, something that I don't plan on mirror crafting, um, simply because, uh, you know, of, of what I just said there. So uh, do factor that in. Uh, for the vast majority of you, uh, I'm assuming uh, that's probably, like, it, it is good advice and anyone can implement it. However, uh, I don't, you know, if you're watching this video and you don't really know how to do a league start and maybe you're a newer player or whatever, um, it's very likely that you're, you're going to be better suited to just getting into maps and, and doing whatnot. Um, you know, if, if you don't have a, a basal grasp of, um, you know, what your synth mods are good, for example, what builds like, you know, the builds that tend to scale well into the late game would be things like uh, armor stackers, in stackers, deck stackers, uh, strength stackers, omni builds, um, you know, fizz converted uh, full fizz conversion builds um you know ts is usually up there um and basically you want to have multiple layered things that you can scale off something off of right the builds that tend to be uh you know league starters or sort of low budget introductory builds tend to be things that have like dot cap on them or that have a bunch of required uniques that are inexpensive um you know and, and they only have a finite amount of ways that they can scale whereas the ones that tend to kind of push into the later game and have the crazy you know, crazy high gear ceilings, they tend to be things where you can like, um, you know, you can scale your through like a weapon and then through like a secondary attribute then through like jewels and then through, you know, all these different things like that, that just allow you to have like the more and more and more and more and more. Um, and so that's the quickest overview I can give for which ones are valuable. But if you have no baseline understanding um, of something like synthesis mods, uh, don't just throw your hat in the dark there. You're probably like, that's, that's not going to be one that's a good idea for you. All right, uh, the next one, invest into the Adorned. Um, Adorned, uh, as you guys know, this league, I've, I've been using, I've uh, been singing its praises since like the second day of the league. I do think that that is going to be more popular this league um, for a few reasons. Number one, uh, I think that minion helmet with the specters that has the abyss jewels is going to drive a lot of people playing minion builds uh, to, to, um, to kind of focus or work around uh, abyss a bit. Um, abyss jewels are not, like when you have items equipped, uh, that scale off of how many abyss jewels you have equipped. It does not count your um, the ones that are on your tree uh, or like in your jewel sockets, only on your gear. Um, however, um, you know, they're, they're still hyper efficient, right? Uh, like you can just get, you know, crit multi prefix, cr uh, crit multi suffix, throw a vol orb on there. It doesn't even matter if it gets an implicit. And it's like, you can get, what's that, 18 and 15. So 18, we go to 36, 45, 15 goes to 37. That's 82% multi. Even without hitting an implicit, you get 82% multi. You're throwing a ball or but a magic tool. It's nuts, right? That's sorry. That's also assuming 150% adorned. Um, but I do think given the the fact that adorned can be used with basically no gear, right? Like what I just mentioned, get a magic jewel, throw a ball over in it. It's corrupted. It still works. And then you can get like a single synth mod, double synth mod, triple synth mod, 
triple synth mod with uh, Gilded Implicit. You can get uh, you can get Adorns that are 50% and Adorns that are 100%. You can get uh, just a regular Cluster Jewel. You can get a seven passive uh, voices, five passive voices, three passive voices, one passive voices. The fact that it can scale so well at pretty much every point um, is certainly something that drives its use case. And it's going to allow people to kind of, again, as I mentioned, uh, what people like to play into the mid and late game tend to be things that have those those high gear ceilings and things where you can make market improvements, which I think the door, the adored is actually probably the most emblematic uh, item of in, in the game, that concept. Um, but it is very, very strong. If any of you have watched my streams, you'll have seen that uh, throughout this league. So do keep an eye out for that. Uh, the way that you can assemble the Adorned is through the four aspects. Uh, one of them drops from the uh, Architect in the uh, Temples. One drops from uh, Delve. I, I've actually never done Delve outside of an achievement, so I, I can't even tell you the boss's name, but it's from Delve. One is from uh, Vault Temples, and one is from Itziris. Uh, what's the next one here? We've got uh, Feed, Fuel, and Marshall. Feed, Fuel, and Marshall is something I brought up like literally in 40 videos. So I'm just going to skim over this one. Item level 50 to 67, 8 passive, 10% attack jewels. If you use a serrated fossil um, with that item level restriction, it is three times more likely to hit Feed, uh, feed the Fury, Fuel the Fight, and Marshall Prowess as it is if you were to do it on a full uh, uh, item level one. Um, and those are the three notables that you want anyways. Uh, it's 54 serrated fossils on average when it's item level restricted, which means it's 162 when it's not. Um, you can often get those, uh, those bases, those jewel bases for like one to five chaos the first couple of days, uh, serrated fossils, similarly. So, um, and you can actually sell that jewel for you know, somewhere between like three to six divines quite frequently. Um, and so, uh, that's one that I've literally been doing for like half a decade. And I, I can't even count how many times I've made videos on that one. Um, number 15, Chaos Jewels. So this is a similar one. Uh, 8 passive jewel, item level 50 to 67. If you use a uh, Aberrant Fossil, the Chaos Fossil, okay, I think it's Aberrant Fossil, um, you can get like, uh, uh, not Grimoth, um, I forget the names of them, but uh, un un unspeakable gifts either. Uh, there's one that gives unholy... I can't remember the names, sorry, of the, uh, the notables, but chaos damage that with like attack and cast speed, you can get the one that gives uh, enemies take increased chaos damage uh, with hinder when you hinder them. Um, there's the one that uh, uh, you get chaos damage per mana um, and then chaos damage and skill duration. Uh, I, again, I'm, I'm blanking on the name of a lot of these, but uh, it, what I do remember is that it takes like 26, ab um, 26 fossils to hit a jewel that's like three like best in slots for a lot of the, the chaos builds super super easy not as many people do this as feed fuel and marshall feed fuel and marshall is commonly used by bow builds so that's that's why you tend to see that price uh be much higher there um uh, as well but what comes with that is that there's more people trying to craft it the chaos ones are a little bit more uh, under the radar um they, they don't sell for quite as much but uh they are actually easier to craft uh, number 16, uh, run Survivor's Guilt Memory. Survivor's Guilt is a Kyrak uh, memory. Um, it is for Harbinger. Survivor's Guilt will turn every single item that drops in a map into a Harbinger currency. This includes like destroyable objects. Um, it, and it, this memory will scale off of anything. So like if you have quantity or like any, any, anything that makes a monster drop more items, that item will then get converted to it. So like pack size is more monsters more items drop quantity more items drop so more shards so it works with deli orbs it works with chisels it works with uh you know alks and goes and, and vol uh vol orbs it works with pack size sorry it works with the uh, party shot so, like party mf party iiq benefits it works with um personal mf whatever it is um the reason why I like it, um, and I, I do actually do, usually we'll do it probably uh, five to ten times in the first day or two, um, is that uh, you get orbs of horizon in abundance, right? You can also get like fracturing shards and stuff, shards, fracturing shards and things like that. And if you're very, very lucky, a mirror shard, fracturing shards are fairly common. Mirror shards, obviously not so much. Um, but what the bread and butter actually is that a lot of people overlook. In fact, a lot of people hide it on their... Um, their uh, loop filter are the orbs of horizon and orbs of horizon shards uh orbs of horizon you can sell for like one to two chaos uh on the first couple days because pe people use them to fill out their atlas um it, it's you know they end up dropping to like a third of a chaos each but uh, i think i've gotten as high as like two chaos for each one before 
And if you have those on your filter, you'll actually pick up like 15 or 20 orbs of horizon per map per memory. And like, I can't remember how many maps there are per survivor's guild memory. It's like three or four, but uh, yeah, you'll, you'll like quadruple your money literally just from orbs of horizon, not to mention, you know, uh, chaos exalted and blah, blah, blah. Uh, you could also take it as a, as a, uh, you know, a, um, a thematic approach, a, uh, strategic approach you could just try and hide as much shit as possible and go for you know just the annulment shards uh exalt shards and uh fracturing shards i guess that'd be up to you um but yeah those can be incredibly lucrative memories in general are incredibly lucrative and uh now that we're talking about memories um just a call back to earlier when i was saying that you should prior not you should but you can prioritize later gear for builds as an investment so to speak and not put that currency into your gear. One of the problems with mapping, not problems, but mapping is progressive, right? And so even though people might be making more currency, sorry, let me get that off the screen. People might be making more currency from uh, per hour as they're exploring their Atlas, right? Like they might be making say two divs an hour when they're down here, like tier one, tier two, whatever. And then they might be making like four divs up in here and blah, blah, blah. However, you have to keep in mind because maps are progressive, people have to reinvest into their gear to be able to keep up with it, right? The gear that you have on a tier one is not going to be sufficient for the gear on a you know, tier 12 red map or whatever. So people are, you have to reinvest in their character. And that's not a bad thing. A lot of the time, if you're playing an appropriate build and one that with some consideration, that, that reinvestment is not lost, right? Like getting better gear, um, you know, principle or like in theory, you can sell everything. A lot of the time, um, you know, people get things that uh, don't really have too much long-term value because they, they get them just as like a uh, kind of a placeholder. Um, but that's not super important to my point. Um, because you have to reinvest the currency that you're making into gear up into a certain point, uh, it kind of like, even if you're a super fast leveler, right, you get some maps and you're just spent like, you get like eight hours ahead. It's like, if those, if you leveled eight hours faster than me, but all eight of those hours on your end were spent putting currency into your build, by the second I go into maps, we're probably actually going to be a relatively level playing field because that's where memories can come in. A lot of memories do not have any kind of benefit to scaling uh, on them when they're done on higher map tiers. Einhar Memory of Harvest Beast is a good example. Uh, the Essence one used to be. They changed it this league, so Essences now have to be at least in uh, yellow maps to get uh, deafening ones. Uh, but Kyrax Memory is one that you can just do on a low tier to get as many shards as you want. Um... I'm not going to go through all the memories, but you could look at them. Uh, the breach one, uh, well, sorry, it depends if you care about breach rings, but uh, for the, uh, just for the, uh, or what are they called again? The flawless abyss, or what are the fuck, what are they called? Breach stones. Breach stones, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, anyway, sorry, my mind's a blank, but the, there are a variety of memories, and there are several of them where the memory, or the level of the map you're doing does not matter. And this is actually one of the reasons why I do Einhar Memory of Harvest Beast so often. Because while I run those, first of all, I save up vultures for my mirror crafts. I sell off the other beast. I put groups together and start doing it very quickly. But I just run them in tier one, tier two, and tier three white maps, right? And then with the profit I'm making, I can use that to invest into other things. <laughs> and so last league, for example, I bought a bunch of plus one um, projectile charms, plus one projectile TWWTs, um, and mirror crafts, right? And so while everyone else is reinvesting their currency into their characters so they can match the progressively more more difficult parts of the thing, um, you can actually stay relatively static. Uh, if you saw my video last week, it, it was called How I'm Making Three Mirrors a Day in Leveling Gear Also While Running White Maps. And like some people thought that that was debate, but it, it was actually the literal, like that was literally happening for, for over a week all in stream too. Um, and the reason why I like doing that is is for is for the reason I just mentioned. It allows me the the wiggle room to not have to be kind of pigeonholed into improving my character, especially because a lot of the improvements people make are incremental as they're progressing through things. And incremental upgrades uh, tend to have like uh, this is not a, an equivocation to trickle down economics in real life, but like upgrades in this game are, are they trickle down right? So like you know. It's, it's basically like if I upgrade something, I have to get rid of my last thing and sell it off to somebody else, which means there always has to be somebody who's like below me on the totem pole. It's kind of like an MLM scheme, <laughs> right? And it's like that person, I, I may have paid more to, to craft it than they're willing to buy it for. But like at a certain point, the buck stops somewhere. The buck stops somewhere. And then there's certain places too that like there's just no, like for a lot of builds, for example, Mage Blood can't be upgraded upon, right? And so it's like, okay, boom, you've hit, you've hit like the... 
So, you, you know, um, that's one thing that a lot of people don't consider when they, they craft things for like profit crafting, um, as the letter or the, you know, the non sophisticates like to call it or the, uh, you know, while, while they're gearing their own character out. Um, if you want to have something like a, a maximized return, having something that is like transitory is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, it, you just have to keep in mind that <clears throat> the value that it has at the time that you craft it is likely not going to be reflected, uh, you know, a week later, or two weeks later or whatever, um, because A, a bunch of other people were doing it and probably are selling theirs at the same time. Um, and B, the market has just had a time to for more, like better items to, to naturally... Uh, uh, have an influx not to mention there's going to be less people demanding it because people will be typically uh further along in their build setups so uh yeah writing memories are great because uh if you're doing the appropriate one um it allows you to still do things that are very 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 competitive and sometimes just flat out better in terms of currency per hour than t16 juiced maps or whatever whatever and you can do it with basically no gear and uh with the currency you are making you can, and because be like beasts especially <clears throat> beasts are basically a currency item they'll sell instantly it's not like you have to sit and wait on them for two days like literally you'll get message for them right away so you can just reinvest right the cycle of reinvestment put your profits into new items sell those items a week later like you know what i mean it just uh, what's what's very important uh, for this strategy and a lot of the strategies i employ um is to maximize my potential uh output while minimizing my long-term requirement for input so uh, mapping is something where you're always going to be uh, like your success is always going to be contingent on how much time you're physically putting in. Right. Um, whereas if I if I have uh, 20 different investments, each one of those trades took, you know, let's say 45 seconds. Right. Um, within a week, I can I can actualize those 45 second encounters into something that can maybe give me 10x, 20x, 30x and like scaling, depending on how high the investment is right um that the fact that there is not really a direct correlation between what my earning potential is and the amount of input that i had to have or in, in other words my output is not contingent on my input um that is the way for me to kind of parabolically scale that is just simply uh not possible for for mapping builds and i and i enjoy mapping right like you guys know i have 40 out of 40 and tons of leagues i just tend to do that stuff later in the league because early on is when you have this this wild ride for the market and uh, you have all these opportunities to buy things that nobody else is looking at that you know are the things you're going to want later anyways. So whether or not you keep them for yourself, it's like, I know this is going to go up in price. You know, my greedy little piggy ass is just fucking sitting here like uh, dopamine says get it right now. But if I defer my pleasure for two days, I can get something that I'll otherwise have to spend three weeks farming for. Hmm. And it's tough to make that call sometimes, but... I'm of the opinion that it's the correct one. So regardless of what you choose to do, do be conscientious of it and try to look at things, maybe not necessarily just as they are, but where they might be, right? Yeah, unless, you know, unless you quit the, the league on day five or day seven or whatever, every, every, every single league over and you don't really give a shit. I know most people are playing for, you know, at least a month, month and a half, two months or whatever. So, uh, you know, try, taking that midterm um, or, you know, even like a one week lens can, can radically transform the way you play. Um, I am going much lower than I anticipated here. I just saw that this is 48 minutes already, so I'll try and pick up the pace here and uh, slow down with these uh, sort of side points. Um, although if you do like the, the side commentaries uh, and like the further elaborations, let me know in the comments as well. Um, but uh, I, I do find there to be a, a pretty direct correlation between the people who want five-minute videos and the people who constantly berate me for, how do I make my first 10 chaos videos? Not that there's anything wrong with new players. Except for everything, get good, Kappa. All right, uh, number 18, number 18, Primal Crush Claw. This is a new one too as well. Oops, sorry, I'm gonna bring this back up on the screen so you guys can follow along. Number 18, this is a new one, Primal Crush Claw, which is a Harvest Beast. It comes from uh, Einhard's Memory of Harvest Beasts. Uh, it previously gave you one to every one, like it would give you one of each a daily master mission. Primal Crush Claw now gives you five Kyrak missions. Why does this matter? Because nobody fucking prices, pri like nobody puts any value to Crush Laws. Even after I, I'm saying this before League, I guarantee you there's going to be people listing them for like like one to two C for like probably a month. Like, I'm, like right now, they're like even five chaos in League. But think about it. Why, why, like why Orbs of Horizon were super popular? Kyrak missions are just a better version of that. 
if you can get a bunch of crush claws you can basically force your way through your entire atlas while choosing your maps and like choosing your rewards um and you can do that like basically semi-deterministically so i actually think that these are going to have a a much higher value this league that a lot of people are probably not going to pick up on um again being able to get five kyrak missions from one beast kill it's like you know that you can clear off a significant amount of uh portion of your atlas uh atlas there and be largely um uh like you're, you you very small amount of reliance on rng in the same way you would maybe with a map drop or getting connected ones or whatever um given the fact that kyrak often gives you several options plus you can get unique uh, maps and uh some things like that so i do think that that one is going to have a substantial substantially higher value especially at the league start than it would in previous uh leagues all right number 19 uh temples for tempest oh yeah this is an e easy way to get six link and it's something that nobody ever looks at uh chronicle of uh sorry temple of atzawadl uh, if you look at Chronicles that have, I can't remember the name of the Tempest room, but there's a tier three room that will give Tempest. It does not guarantee a Corrupting Tempest, but if you do get a Corrupting Tempest, which I believe is one in three, I think there's Radiating, Corrupted, and then there's uh, Enlarging maybe. Um, that's the one with like, Corrupting is the one with like the red circles, you stand in them, then the gear that you kill, the char the gear that drops off characters, or uh, sorry, mobs you kill, um, all of it will have as if a Volorb was applied to it, so... Uh, you can usually get, uh, you know, somewhere between like four to six, six links, uh, per corrupting tempest. Um, those six links you can sell for like 30 to 70 chaos kind of thing in the first couple of days if they're corrupted. Um, or you can use a mythic tainted mythic orb on them and just try to turn them into, uh, unique items if, uh, the base is appropriate, but either way, uh, nobody ever, ever assigns any value to like the off. When I say off rooms, I mean like people tend to just look at locus of corruption and Doriani's Institute when they're pricing, uh, temple or the the chronicles of atzawadl uh so yeah keep your keep your eyes out for that because that's a e really easy way to get uh, six legs uh especially like even if you like whether or not that's for profit or if you need one um uh, definitely take a look there <clears throat> uh number 20 temple for easy access to tyrannical fizz bases um similar sorry i need another drink here um similar to the tempest there uh there's a room uh on there um Poison, some, I, I, again, sorry, I'm, I'm very, very tired right now, but the tier three poison room, um, it gives, uh, one of the things you can give is the physical mod where it's uh, tyrannical or an effect tyrannical, which is 155 to 169% fizz damage. And then it also, on top of that, that mod's a hybrid, gives 5% fizz added as chaos. Um, you, you can also get the spell damage version, which is like uh, 79 or, or 74, 79% spell damage with 5% uh, added as chaos. Um, that's a really, really easy way if you're playing a fizz based attack build, or uh, you can actually do it for LA builds too. They just drop in different rooms, like Storm of Corruption or um, the Fire Room, I can't remember the name of whatever. But um, Temple is a great place to get weapons early on, um, especially attack based ones. Uh, rolling Tyrannical is rather difficult. Um, I know for well, actually, it's mostly bow specific people get for the plus two fracture, but. Uh, if you want like an axe, playing a two-handed axe build or something like that, or uh, if uh, I'm sure a lot of people are probably going to be playing a uh, lightning arrow this league on Ellie bow builds or whatever, or um, you know, um, elemental one-handed sword, whatever it is, right? <coughs> That's another one of those rooms that people basically never assign any value to whatsoever. Uh, so if you search them on temples, you'll find them for quite cheap. Um, and especially early when you don't have a ton of alterations and when a lot of people are not running higher tier maps uh, for the appropriate item level bases, um, it's a really easy way to get a nice, easy starter weapon. Just having Tyrannical on there and then putting on like a bench craft, you know, you'll be able to, to do more than just T16s. Uh, it's an easy way to settle that problem. Or you can sell them too, and they actually they have good value as well um double corrupting gems that have vol versions uh this one i actually have if you're a patreon i actually have a full spreadsheet uh written out on this um part of the uh, ones that i uploaded for the uh the tier three guys here uh built-ins floss crafting plus two amulets fossil rerolling yeah, gem double temple. okay so this one right here <clears throat> uh <laughs> um I was going to do a video on how, uh, like, I was making a couple mirrors a day uh, in Temple. I never got around to it. Um, this is just a uh, spreadsheet that has the capacity to calculate profitability for you um, for gem double corruptions. But the TLDR on this one, though, is that uh, 
first of all, uh, Dorianis is often rather cheap um, early on. Uh, there's, it, it's like it, it's kind of like in a gray area. Sometimes people fully neglect it, um, and then sometimes because gem, like especially spell based builds, getting that additional gem level is very important. Uh, and so people for like a day or two sometimes have kind of like this surge price on Dorianis just while people are trying to get that like level 21 gem. But then after like a day or two, it just like goes right back down again because 21 gems can be accessed from a variety of different, like there, there's like 30 different divination cards that do it. It's not that difficult to level them naturally. Um, and then, you know, of course people, there's certain contingencies of player base that will just farm Dorianis over and over and over and over and over or uh, corrupt them on mass or whatever it is. Um, but, uh, yeah, if you can get uh, access to the Dorianis, um, early, uh, go ahead and do them. My personal preference is always to do vol gems. Uh, and the reason for that is that you might be thinking like, if you go to look at, uh, where you're going to want to look for this and again, always confirm these things. But if you check out skill gems on POE Ninja, right. And then you're going to want to look for like, let's say level 21, right. Cause we're, we're going to ignore awaken gems for right now. Sometimes you're going to see things like this where it's 2123, right? If you see a 2123 is the most valuable, that might make sense. Now, this for the argument's sake, let's pretend those top two, which are both vault gems, don't exist. And the, the, the most expensive one is a 2123, right? I've done this in the past. Um, and it's like, okay, I'm going to go try and make the most expensive one from a profit perspective. However, 2123 is a 1 in 32 corruption. And pretty much anytime there's something that's a, a popular build that has a 2123 as like its best in slot that people are pursuing meaningfully um the throwaway gems so like the ones that do not hit 2123 are usually worthless because there are so many because it's a one in 32 the people who are going after one on average are going to have 31 of those gems that they don't need right and you got, you got to imagine there's more than one person going after that so there's just like this wide abundance of them now so that's reason number one reason number two uh, and sorry, the one in 32 is the primary reason, but reason uh, for going for the vol gems conversely is that every vol gem is a one in 12. So it's almost three times more likely to hit. And often they're actually even more expensive, but not only that, uh, they're, they're like bricks will sell. Right. Um, and if it's an aura, you don't really even have to put quality on it. So it's kind of like a four pronged benefit there. Um, you know, if you get like a 2020 righteous fire, right. It's a one in 12 for it to go plus one and vol. Same thing like vol haste, any, any one of these vol gems, right? So three times is likely to happen. Uh, you know, if you get the brick, so like something like, uh, let's say you get vol haste 2020, it didn't go 2120. In the current league, you can still sell those for like three divs each, right? Um, and uh, with auras as well, vol discipline, vol grace, vol haste, uh, you don't even actually need quality on those, although that's usually a little bit more expensive. Uh, but you can see here, uh, looking at the level 21 gems, most of these most expensive ones are actually vol gems anyways. So they're more expensive. Um, so you might have been inclined to do that anyways. But um, it's something that I like to focus on for sure, because a lot of people are still, even though it's been out for years, a lot of people are ignorant of the um, actual odds for double corrupting gems. And uh, it's it's pretty basic math, actually, to, to do this, uh, you know if you somebody probably took a screenshot of the uh the spreadsheet i showed you guys there but uh for those of you who have access to it permanently if you go look on that you can actually just mentor, manually enter the data and it'll solve it for you but in general one in 12 and then just look at the sale price of the ones that don't hit um and it's it's usually a massive massive gap that exists uh between those it is not uh, rocket science there um okay uh level awakened gems with bramblebacks this one is the easiest shit in the world um wild brambleback it drops from harvest memories it allows uh it, it automatic it gives you uh like a level on any awakened gem as long as it's not corrupted bramble uh transform an item to increase the level of non-corrupted awakened gems by one um so you could use this on any awakened gem uh, including awakened enlighten empower and enhance um, the crazy and slash funny part, and actually I probably have an example of this right here. Um, mm -hmm. and this is like, you might kind of dismiss this as being like the last day of the league. Uh, this, this, this will happen literally every, <laughs> throughout the whole league. It's, and it always makes me laugh. All right. Awakened elemental damage with attacks. Level one, 2.9 divines. Level five, six divines. So it is a three divine jump from going from level one to level five. However, Bramblebacks are like 20 chaos or 30 chaos. 
So it's like you, you spend 120 C on Beast and you get three divines from it. Sometimes the, the gap is like crazy. Um, Awakened and Unleash. Look at this. Awakened Unleash, level one, nine divines. Level five, 28 divines. And you would think that some people are going to be like, you know, be like, oh, everyone, everyone must know about this. There's no way it'll actually sell. Not the case. People like go look, they look for the gem they want to buy. Um, I was doing a bunch of vivid watcher rerolls for data collections purposes. Uh, I bought like 250 of them. That's why I have uh, so many of these in my stash here right now. Um, and like I, I can t tell you firsthand, people people will pay for the the level five ones, even if it doesn't make sense mathematically. So that's that's a very 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 easy one to do, and it uh, takes almost no time at all. Um, with the Bramblebacks, reroll awakened gems with vivid watchers. Uh, this is something I was just doing. Um, I do have data on this. I, I was actually, I found out as soon as I started rolling that apparently um, there are publicly available spreadsheets on this. One of the guys was saying in my, my Patreon, it might have been actually when he was uh, holding himself or he collected his data with himself. Uh, in any case, once I hit a thousand vivid uh, watchers, so it's a large enough sample that I, I feel comfortable drawing some conclusions from it, um, at least in a way that I'd be willing to share it. I'll make that guys, I'll, I'll make that publicly available Patreon or not. Um, However, that can be quite lucrative. Um, you know, the high-end ones, uh, they, they, they vary somewhat, but it's usually like Spell Echo, Spell Cascade, Fork, um, GMP, Multi-Strike. Those tend to be the, the higher tier ones. Um, but especially early on, if you can get really cheap Vivid Watchers, Awakened Gems are obviously a massive asset. Um, as we discussed already, gems tend to be how uh, a lot of builds, uh, like a, a lot of people will focus on builds that scale their damage primarily off gem level um at the beginning of a league just because they they tend to have a much much lower um uh gear uh or, or gear floor or currency floor wait ceiling floor entry point whatever it's cheaper to start them <laughs> and then they do a decent damage but they scale off with gems sorry it's, it's been a long couple of days i've been kind of burning the candle on both ends here trying to trying to uh, uh just, yeah anyways you guys don't care about this so moving on um awakened gems vivid watchers check those out uh you can uh, definitely get some good value there uh the split amulets from heist i'm sure that this is one that will probably not uh be very easy to get anymore because of last league but the heist amulets are obviously incredibly valuable simplex and uh what's the other one called i can't remember the name of the other one. Oh, actually i have one equipped focused yeah simplex and fo focused amulets if you <clears throat> happen to see one of those that pop up on the trade site uh you can just buy a fenimal plague arachnid or a fracturing um fossil and then split them and you get two of them um but that also actually on that point it, it can apply to other things too you can actually do that to like six link bases you want to look at the base value but like uh one of them that comes to mind is the um uh the chest uh again blanking on the name the one that gives plus one to vol skill gems that uh, is like temple from temple um and it's a hybrid chest like armor es and evasion um oh sacrificial garb sacrificial garb there's a divination card that gives uh six link sack garb you can use a split beast on that and you'll get two so you get the six link use the the split beast now you've got two six links right you can do that same thing for like the, these look what we're talking about here the simplex and the focused amulets um if you're lucky uh, you know obviously it's gonna be fairly difficult to to snipe those as i imagine there's gonna be quite a few people doing it you can always farm one yourself um but uh you know you can you can cross apply that to uh base types anywhere um that are of value uh and that actually brings to the next point number 25 uh, split expeditions with knights uh this is one that a lot of people don't do um if you're going to run expedition i don't know if many people are pl planning on doing this or farming this um it's something i've done at some points in different leagues depending on you know what the relative strength is of uh, expedition at the time and what my personal goals are uh but typically with expedition the um the one with uh uh da danig the the knights whatever i can remember the full name of it uh the danig ones tend to be the most expensive because the reroll currency gets can get you the um um oh my god what are they called the uh whatever oh my god sorry uh the Oh, it's going to drive me nuts. It's the biggest brain fart. Expedition, not trials. Fuck. Okay, sorry. I don't want to make this. I will make you sit here while I try and figure it out. Whatever those expedition things. Logbooks. Logbooks. Fuck. <laughs> you can get logbooks from Danig. Also, the Danig currency can be converted to the currency of any other type. So the ones that have like the knights, whatever it's called again, um, are tend to be a lot more expensive. Um, or if you find one that has a guaranteed boss on it. Uh, you can actually split those um, uh, 
uh, logbooks, uh, and you can double up on them. Uh, in almost every case, especially early on, it's going to be worthwhile to do. Venable Plagued Arachnids are usually like 20 or 30 C. Um, and if you can get a, a well-rolled Danning Mission early, if you are running Heist, uh, that's, a, that's a good way to get some currency. Um, number 26, using uh, Tainted Mythic Orbs on T4 or T5 Corrupted Six Link Bases. T4 and T, uh, the uh, chance for uh, a item to go unique when using a Mythic Orb uh, is directly correlated, similar to its... Ch it's basically a zero-sum chance orb, right? So the the more common the, the unique is, the more likely it's to turn into it. In fact, there's now an entire website for it. I'll post this on the Patreon. Uh, POE. Uh, uh, uh. So you can actually uh, look up the odds specifically now. So let's say, I don't know, uh, body armor we were talking about, right? <laughs> well, what's a commonly... Uh, uh, golden Plate. Because probably you're probably familiar with that. So if you look here, you can see Golden Plate. It's a Tier 4 Unique which means it'll only take three mythic orbs on average, right? So one of the things that you can do for some currency early on, this is actually incredibly lucrative if you know which bases to look at. Uh, look for a unique that is commonly used. That's like tier four, tier five. I don't really suggest going above that because again, it's going to make the amount of mythic orbs required uh, skyrocket a bit. Um, and also you can try and uh, apply some nuance to it by looking for bases that only have one unique associated with them, especially if it's a more common one, as we are showing right here um because uh these will be especially with unique items they're like you can get or not you can get these are all often sell for you know six divs five divs whatever they can be a, a real pretty penny um and if you do combine this with something like running locate or um, the tempest uh the tempest uh, uh temple um rooms um where you get uh the corrupting tempest right bring around a stack of uh, mythic orbs you can pop off numerous six links in a run sometimes. Um, and if not, just keep an eye on the trade site. Uh, look out for bases that uh, are have a higher value uh, mythic. And uh, it's actually a very, very stable and relatively easy way to do that. Um, pretty much every league, actually, since Tainted Mythics have been around, I've done that. All right, number 27. Um, this is to craft very easy um, plus two minion uh, wands. Uh, but you can also apply this to other plus two like scepters and wands and stuff as well fire cold lightning fizz whatever uh you want to take a shuddering fossil a corroded fossil a jagged fossil and a metallic fossil if you do that um specifically right here i have written a uh, minion wand just again because of the that new specter helmet and i saw a bunch of people getting pretty excited about minions so <coughs> don't include this but that same four uh, that same four fossil combo can be used to make a, a plus two across a variety of different bases uh it's a one in 11 for minions um if you have a fractured like let's say you have a fractured plus one to cold skill gems um doing that will also put the plus one to spell skill gems on you know whatever the base is as well so it's an easy way to do that um and uh, it's, it's often incredibly incredibly cheap to do so the minion ones uh especially you can get like 10x margins on <laughs> all right crafting quivers using essences on fractured plus one arrow bases i have covered this in a previous video but it was a long time ago uh you can make like like relatively close to end game quivers in about five minutes it's like the easiest craft in the game in my opinion if you get a plus one uh fractured sorry plus one arrow fractured uh quiver um all you need to do is go and get whatever flat damage type you want so let's say you want flat fizz right so you get deafening essence of contempt or if you want to use shrinking you do shrinking you just spam that until you hit uh, t1 or tier 2 crit multi with bows right so now you've got plus one arrow and the multi then you just go and do craft cannot roll attack mods all right so now you've got your your uh the flat fizz you've got your plus one arrow which is fractured and you got the t1 crit multi craft can't roll attack mods and then you just exalt twice the only non-attack mods on prefixes are life and damage with bow skills so you're getting guaranteed to hit that and if you get shitty tiers of bow skills and life all you do get that make sure that uh, can't roll attack mods is still on there and you can just annul it because the flat fizz the multi and the plus one arrow are all attack skills so they cannot be annulled off so you can literally just deterministically exalt um and a null exalt and a null exalt and a null until you get whatever tiers of uh, life and damage with both skills you are happy with and at that point it will be flat damage whatever type you choose bow skill damage uh sorry damage with both skills like t1 life 
T1 crit multi plus one arrow, and then you can put your final as a crafted mod, usually attack speed or frenzy and crit. GG. Sometimes you get like 75 divs for those, and then you buy the, the fracture for like three divs and spend four minutes crafting them. I've made quite a bit of money on those uh, in the past. Um, all right. Uh, what's the next one? 29. Look for arbitrage opportunities. What the hell long is it? Oh my God. We're at an hour and 10 minutes. All right. This video is going to be quite long. Uh, probably going to go like an hour and 40 minutes or something like that, but. Oh, God, hopefully you guys like this. <laughs> I'm so tired. All right, look for arbitrage opportunities that exist by converting currencies. Um, sorry, I'm going to explain myself quickly there. I was going to re release this at like 11.45. I was going to start working on this at 11.45 a.m. today. Um, my I started streaming, turned on my stream, prepared my shit, and then my internet cut out, Dream, game went off. Uh, I called Rogers, my ISP. Uh, was held on, put on hold for an hour and a half to find out that uh, even though I live in a, mil a city of 7 million people, in downtown not like in the boonies uh apparently there was a uh, service outage uh i kind of like i didn't like harangue him but i i, I was kind of demanding to to know how long it was going to take because it was pretty ridiculous during a work week too work day uh for that to happen downtown and he's like oh we'll send you a text it'll probably be about 45 minutes so lo and behold six hours later uh the internet's not, still not on and uh yeah that's uh that's why it took so long to do this because i couldn't log into the game and uh, I couldn't, uh, you know, it's not like a lot of what I wrote there or have written for this was written on my phone, but I still wanted to get some of the relevant things and show you tabs and go to POE Ninja and whatnot, as well as actually be able to upload this. So uh, it's quite late now. It's like 1 10 a.m. And I've been, so I've just been kind of sitting around for like 17 hours. <laughs> to do. So I apologize if I get a little uh, a yawny in the middle of here or whatever, but uh, we'll bang this out for you boys because fucking right. Let's get you set off straight. All right. Um. But I apologize if I do forget words or uh, stumble a little bit with my with what I'm saying. Cause, uh, it's been a long, long, long day, long few days. All right, look for arbitrage opportunities that exist by converting currencies to vendors in town. Uh, this one is one actually that I do pretty much every league, uh, relatively consistently, and you can also do it almost immediately. Um, what comes to mind specifically is chance orbs. Uh, chance orbs are more popular on the early days of the league because they can be used to buy. Um, uh, from heist they buy heist contracts and also uh, from Kyrak the missions that he sells like the, the white maps they sell for chance orbs too um, So the, the chance orbs tend to be at like their peak value in relative cost or relative price uh, For like day one to like three or day four <coughs> Fuck me. Sorry guys Ooh. And uh Conversely, uh, jewelers and fuse, the first day or so, they tend to be really low priced. Usually, like after a day, though, they kind of like spike for a little bit and go back down. But it's actually, it's fairly antiquated to like the vast majority of six links that most people get are not through manually fusing them these days, right? You get them through like tainted currencies or you buy a base that's already six link through a div card and craft on it or split it or whatever it is. Um, it's it's not, at least for myself, it's it's not something that's super commonly done manually anymore and uh, uh because of that and especially on day one because you know most people who have fuse like you got 10 fuse or whatever it's not like you're gonna sit there and be like all right i have a good shot of hitting a six link with this it, for most people it's far more practical to sell those for a couple of chaos and you know like buy a gold room or something uh but because of that though um the ratio on on, on fuse is like i sometimes i can get like eight eight of them to a chaos however a lot of people don't realize you can go to a vendor in any town uh, press shift control and click and then you you can convert at one fuse into one chance orb um and i remember a couple leagues ago i was buying fuse at seven to one and i put up a buy order for jewelers as well because jewelers can be converted four to one so four jewelers to one fuse and then uh was buying chance orbs as i mentioned one to one but the price of chance orbs was three to one so for seven to one on fuse i got three to one on chance so that meant i was making 233 percent profit like margin and because it's a, a currency they like instantly sell so i just got people to come trade me in highgate <laughs> i was literally i was taking one guy i would take one guy's fuse buy them off because you can luckily you don't have to buy them one at a time it'll do a stack at a time right so it's very quick i, I convert the fuse to the chance from the, to the other guy uh just with the vendor and then i would sell it to the other guy in the party who was standing there because i had sold the one he had messaged me for already um that was the league the the, the that league i think actually that might have been crucible uh, that was my best league start ever, uh, where I made five mirrors in the first 48 hours. 
So like the league starts for me, uh, Eastern Standard Time, North America, usually around 5 p.m. on a Friday. By Sunday at 6 p.m., I had five liquid mirrors. Not, like not in total value, like literally just in mirrors. I also had probably a couple mirrors worth of gear too. All right, sorry, moving on. Um, that's so that's what I mean with um, the uh, arbitrage opportunities. All right, number 30, uh, double corrupt awakened enlightened power enhanced early when the level fours have high value. Uh, this is one of the things actually that was probably the largest contributor uh, to that when I said the weekend I made five mirrors. Um, and so I'll just speak to what I mean here with an anecdote. Uh, I was purchasing uh, level one enhances, clean awakened enhances for three divines. Um, nobody was like, nobody gave a shit about them. Um, and then wild bramblebacks, we talked about those earlier, the ones that force the... Uh, they can grant a, a, a level to wait, awaken gems, so you can instantly make them level four, right? And then temples, we also mentioned this, the double corrupting of those, they're often quite cheap. So we combined all three of these things, and uh, what was killing me, and like I thought this was hilarious, because it's the first couple days of the league, nobody has leveled, like, uh, awaken, or sorry, nobody has leveled in powers, enhances, or enlightens yet, right? So if it bricks, right, if you go and double corrupt an awakened one, and it bricks, it's still level four. And there are no level fours in the market. And so what was hilarious was that if it bricked, it still sold for more than it cost. So I remember buying them for three divines, right? And uh, the, the clean versions, level one, clean, clean awakened and hats, three divines. I would spend 60 chaos to make a level four. Um, I would spend 50 chaos on a Dorianis, and then I would go take it to, to Temple. And if it did not get plus one, I would sell it for eight divines. So I would make four divines per offer, three divines, three and a half, four divines. And if it went plus one, which every one in every four do, I would sell it for 80 divines. And so the only possible outcome was to get, uh, you know, there, there was there was zero, like I remember when it being in, uh, you know, our, our crafting guild chat, which is like the five guys usually that I uh, kind of cycle sometimes, like it's not always the same ones every league, but it's usually about five guys who help me out with mirror crafts. Like when I, when I go to bed and stuff, they'll pick up beasts. Um, and you know, we do the, the sh shared funding at least. <clears throat> we usually only do that for the first week or two and then people go off on their own way. But when it's a hyper competitive thing, like a bows or whatever, that's when you'll see us working together in that early stage of the league. And, uh, yeah, I, I remember when I, when I came across that and I, I shared that in our little group chat, people were fucking dying. Um, it's obviously not something that a ton of people can do at once. There's a obvious, there's a very, very limited supply of these, um, awakened in power and enlightened tend to be in, enlightened, especially it's like, I, I wouldn't even bother looking at that one, frankly in power. You can actually get them in there. Sometimes I bought in powers for seven, eight divines before, um, right. And like level one, sorry, level fives, you can sell for, you know, um, I think when I was buying them at eight divs, I was selling level fives for 325 divs, um, so, you know, it's a one, it's four times the cost, right? It's actually pretty simple math. If you want to do this just in your head, little mental math. So you want to find out if doing awakened gems is profitable with the, the awakened powers and enhances and enlightens, uh, just take the cost of the gem, right? Uh, multiply that by four, uh, because, uh, because it's a one in four to hit, uh, plus one. Um, and so three of those four will brick. So look at a level four, because if it goes minus one level to level three, you can just put it in your backup weapon and it'll level back up to four. So look at a brick level four, right? So let's say you spend 10 divines for each gem. That's 40 divines spent. Uh, they sell for, let's say, eight divines when they're level four. Okay, so that's three times eight. That's 24 divs. And then you take the level five gem, add that to the, 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 the three bricks. So let's say a level five sells for 100. So it's 100 plus 32. Okay, and what was the total expenditure? 40 divs plus four temples. So the temples are a div and a half, 46 divs. And we said it was what, 132? So that means it's, um, you know, what's that? Uh, 90, 80, 86 divines profit per four corruptions. So 21 and a half divines profit every single time you run a temple. Temple corruptions take like, I don't know, a minute and a half. So 21.5 divines profit, minute and a half, prorate that. Yeah, that's what 800 divides an hour. Now, obviously, it's not real. That's not a realistic number, but you get some idea for how that math can can play out at times. And you'll also probably understand why I spend so much time in Temple towards the end of the leagues. All right, no more no more specifics on that one, but do pay attention to those, and you can also apply that to other awakened gems too, of course. Or if you want to scale it down, you can just do it on regular exceptional gems. Whew. Oh man. 
I feel like we're at the point in the video where if you're still watching, you're probably not going to get upset. If I uh, just take a second to have a sip, I, I apologize for like these little breaks, but oh, it's hard to, to talk nonstop. Oh my god, hard in the voice box. Oh my god, I pray to God, my my microphone is um, it's a uh, it's a touch mic, right? When you see that light go out, it means the microphone's off. I just looked down and I saw that the light was off. I kind of bumped into it a little bit. I'm hoping that that just happened. I, I swear to God, if there is a part of this video that is muted, I'm not watching this back. <laughs> I can't, I can't realize I'll do that. If, 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 any, if, if, if I was just muted and somebody is hearing me for the first time for X amount of time, I am so sorry. I swear to God I was talking, but I'm also not going to revisit or edit this. Fuck, I hope that was just a <laughs> I hope I just did that. Oh, man, that would suck. All right, back to the program. Um, craft Flask with Ink Effect and Flagellance. Uh, this is something we've covered extensively. Uh, I have the Flask Crafting video, and I'm sure most of you are aware of this by now. Crafting Flasks is just very easy, very consistent. Uh, I'm not going to go into much detail on these ones. Um, I do have a video called, uh, it's under Belton Recommends on my playlists. I'm sure most of you have seen it anyways. It's quite a popular video, but it's um, Belton's definitive guide to flask crafting. It's like an like I break, I make spreadsheets. I would take down the weightings of different mods, different base types, how those interrelate. There's really nothing I can add that's not in that video. So go check that out if you're interested in that. Um, Katarina, this is something I've seen a lot of people bring up. Obviously, it's kind of first thought given the changes that are happening with uh, Betrayal. Um, one of the things I thought I would mention with running Kata, because I, I still think it's going to be good. Um, I actually think that the Veiled Chaos Orbs, which is, or I guess they're just Veiled Orb now, um, a lot of people have been focusing on that. I actually think that that is the fourth, the fourth best thing that Katarina offers. Um, I think that the the three, because Katarina actually has four things that can be like quite monetized. The the one that will be the most profitable, in my opinion, the first day or two will be the Devouring Diadem. Uh, the second would be Cinder Swallows and the identifications for Cinder Swallows. We do not have the reduced mana craft anymore. RIP. I love that bad boy. But you still have 3% regen and rarity and damage taken leeches life, blah, blah, blah. And then you also just have the Cinder Swallows themselves, right? Some people will probably want to use those for their builds, especially before people get Mage Bloods and, um, you know, using unique belts or sorry, unique flasks is obviously more conducive with <clears throat> not Mage Bloods. So mage Bloods can't be used. Them. Well, not more than one at least. Um, the next thing would be the plus two support craft, uh, the Katarina, uh, exclusive craft. A lot of people, uh, don't, I think give enough credit to that. It's kind of a pain in the ass, but if you do have TFT access or um, I, I don't know if people actually sell these on my server, I can make a channel for it. If not, if anyone's here, <clears throat> uh, that is a part of my discord server. I'll, uh, it's always linked below every single video in the description. If you're not never, anyone's welcome. Um, if you can find some way to market crafts though, like bench crafts, uh, plus two support gems is a relatively rare one because it comes from Katarina weapons and obviously not that many people run Betrayal. I mean, this league will be more, but uh, also some people are, are limited by their ability to actually kill Katarina. Uh, the plus two support gems is like is build build enabling for a lot of builds though. That, that craft you can get, you know, 20, 30, 40 chaos sometimes. Just like I, I've gone and trade one before, but like, I have all the June crafts, like DM me if there's something you're looking for, right? And I'll get like 35 messages and like, uh, you know, people come in uh, five at a time and you get like 10, 20 C from each one of them just for crafting stuff for them. Getting the plus two is very good. Um, and even if, you know, even if you're not selling it, it's I think it's good, a good thing to have just for your own sake. Um, but it, especially early on though, because so many builds play, um, play uh, like league starters or whatever that scale off of like, I, uh, we talked about this a few times now, but one of the things that often is is, uh, is shared between league starters is that they scale off of gem levels rather than like weapon DPS or whatever, just because it's easier to do. So plus two support gems is naturally one of those ones that would be super popular for gem level builds. All right. Um, and finally, the fourth thing that is uh, naturally going to be quite impactful are the Veiled Chaos Orbs. I do actually have a lot of thoughts on these. I, I, uh, I did make a... Oh, did I close it? Shit. Oh, no, there it is. <laughs> I actually made a, a TLDR thing here. Uh, for These are the changes that I thought were kind of impactful. Um, I did a TLDR for them so I wouldn't go too long in this video. I, I say that every time and it never happens. 
Anyways, uh, entry-level gear and low-level profit crafts will be harder to roll because of Veiled Chaos Orbs, uh, or the Veiled Orb change. However, high-end crafts and mirror items will be much easier to roll. Hinecore's locks can now be used to ID slash predict Veiled modifiers. And physical weapons, uh, these are just, I'm going over the changes that were written there. Fizz weapons are slightly more difficult to craft now, uh, because they made it so that previous, yeah, anyone who's ever crafted like a fizz bow or anything like that, you'll, you'll know that the, uh, fizz leech's mana and fizz leech's life can be bench crafted as a suffix and it'll block the prefix. Uh, that's been changed. You can't do that anymore. So that adds a, an additional one to 2000 waiting to fizz prefixes. Uh, we've got the flask craft uh, change. So the all res, the rainbow uh, is what it's called. 37 to 40 T1. That's no longer there. So RIP to that. They got rid of reduced mana cost on jewel suffixes and the flask, which is actually a pretty, not enough substantial in the grand scheme of things. But that was always uh, like, anytime I was like dead broke and, and I knew that I like, you know what I mean? It's like, I know I need a small amount of currency and I have a limited amount of either time or, or input currency to go to that. That was always my go-to. So I'll miss that one, actually. Uh, the Veiled Chaos thing I'm excited for. I think it's always fun to have cool new implementations on that. And we already went over the belt change with called arms and whatnot. So, yeah, th those were my little brief bullet point thoughts on the changes there. There's, there's other thoughts I have, but they're not pertinent to this video. All right, so we covered Katarina. Um, look for divination cards. Yeah, th one of the things I would recommend running trade alerts on or at least having like a tab open to that you can occasionally refresh to take a look. Uh, divination cards early on are like incredibly, incredibly good uh, modes for making profit. Um, it's yet to be seen this league, obviously, since it hasn't come out yet, uh, whether or not the change to stack deck rates and all that stuff is going to have a major impact on this uh, because stack decks obviously would have had a pretty... Uh, would have been a pretty big cause for it but a lot of the time people especially in the first like day one two and three kind of thing um if so, if they get like a a good card that's a part of a set that's like requires more than like four cards four tends to in my experience tends to be kind of the threshold where people don't really it's like four or more like ah fuck this too much effort even if they know the card like makes it like a sick item it's like they just don't you know they want to get in their maps they just don't want to think about it if you just take the time to like put that set together sometimes it's like it's like crazy money uh things like garish power um you know I've, I've got like very good cost breeze in the past not that that's relevant anymore within the current meta but um one of the ones that's very good i'm, I'm trying to think of the name here it's uh, uh poison bloom or something bloom i think anyways there, there's ones that give like 21 23 chaos corrupted gems 21 23 like uh or level 21 gems or spider gems whatever as I've, I've we've talked about this like 20 times gems are very popular early on level gems obviously especially so there are divination cards that can give you um fully leveled ones 21 23s vols whatever take a look out for those ones sometimes there's currency cards that can be done although uh you know the more obvious the reward from the card and the more blatant it is, rather, uh, typically the closer to its reflective value is this. There's actually another way to get synthesis mods, too. There are two divination cards that can give triple synth items. One of them is guaranteed to be jewelry. The other one is just a random triple synth item. And, of course, you could always just manually synthesize with the harvest as well. All right. Um, run live searches for jewels early. Oh, yeah. That's number 34. Uh, traditional jewels. Cobalts, Crimsons, Viridians, Prismatics. Uh, you're not going to see Prismatics, but the first three. Um... They do not have item levels uh, requirements on them because there are no tiers in the mods. That means you can get a perfect four modded jewel, right? Like 7% life, global crit multi, 8% attack speed with like bows and 5% attack speed. That can drop at like level two. Uh, so like literally day one right away, there will be jewels that are perfect available. Nobody, um, similar to the cluster jewels, re regular jewels, uh, you know, people are... Um, they get them while they level and they can get them at earlier stages cluster jewels because of the points required um specifically tend to be later on in, in like at later thoughts of builds um you know viridians cobalts crimsons um they are still are somewhat of an afterthought they're definitely not most people's priority but uh they certainly have you know mass adoption earlier than cluster jewels do typically um that being said though if you're looking day one like if you just like say you put seven percent life and like global crit multi or crit multi with spells or whatever the hell it is you're looking for uh you can put two or three mods up i guarantee you you'll be able to find like near perfect ones for one two three chaos um 
you know, whether or not you sell those later on, you probably get 50 or 100 times margin on them if you do. Um, jewels can have such a radical impact on the overall playability of your character, not to mention the, you know, any, any gaps or holes that you're filling, you need to be filled. Um, and, and another thing too is that uh, even if you don't end up using the ones that, uh, if you say you get a good four modded jewel, right, you no longer need it, you split that sucker. Now it's a two modded magic jewel. Boom, let's go. The Adorn's back in the game, baby. Synergy. All right. Uh, but yeah, so run live searches or just check out uh, traditional jewels when you have some time. Uh, wine Vultures. Uh, Sakawine Vulture is just a beast. Uh, it looks like a baby vulture when you see it in a map, but it is a pink, a fat pink vulture. Kind of looks like a chicken almost. Um, that will give you a six link. So that's one of the ones that uh, you could do early on. Um, people often do not like know or don't even bother reading what red beasts are before they bottle them. Uh, you could quite often get these for like two or three chaos in the trade site couple the first couple of days and the cheapest six links um for armors they for armors armors to always seem to be more expensive than uh weapons weapons are you know 10 c or something like that but if you get a chest plate body armor they're usually like 30 40 50 minimum um so you just buy a couple of those and you're good to go um Venable Plague Arachnid, Split Beast uh, to double up the Sync Laces. We, are, we already actually spoke to, about that, so that's strategy number 35 and 6. Uh, the Split Beast, as I mentioned, anytime there's a good base, we were talking about the uh, uh, Expedition things, uh, logbooks, um, you know, the uh, uh, b -b 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 the plus one... Uh, oh, why am I blanking on the name again? The plus one uh, to Vol Skills body armor that comes from uh, Ziri. Uh, Sacrificial Garb and whatever so <clears throat> using a split beast to get uh, two of those bases you can also just buy those bases like you don't need to get one yourself from a div card turn in or or whatever uh people will post them on un unsplit all the time because there there's actually a reasonable amount of people that think splitting is like bad splitting does literally nothing to an item except it can't be split anymore there's no other downside to that it can still be influenced synthesized whatever it is the only thing it prevents is it from being split again that's it, in case any of you are also confused, because I, I I often like see people uh, espousing that rhetoric, and it's just it's not rooted in any reality. All right, uh, number thirty-seven. Temple gloves can have their resistances uh, re-rolled, uh, which will also change the damage modifier that corresponds. And this is something that you can do literally throughout the whole league uh, to a great de a great de a degree of success. Um, uh, you, if anyone was watching me this league, you, oh, Jesus, you'll probably have seen me do this quite a bit. In fact, if I just go through a random tab here, uh, I bet you I could probably find one. Oh, there we go. Fire. All right, so you see how this one has the uh, fire res with uh, fire damage against burning enemies? What well, you're going to be looking for, uh, let's say you want cold res. So you see fire to cold, right? The resistance modifier. But because it's a hybrid mod, fire to cold. It also changes the damage modifier. Why that's relevant is because the cold one is worth significantly more than the others, usually, uh, because uh, increased damage scales basically infinitely with uh, whatever. Uh, flat damage is the flat fire damage. Uh, it depends what build you're playing, uh, but flat damage uh, can have view of bad, uh, you know, scaling coefficient, or if you're not playing a fire based build, um, that's not that great. Uh, and then obviously shock uh, increasing your crit chance. Uh, there's a hard cap on crit, so for most builds, especially uh, if you're already crit capped, it's useless. Whereas increased damage uh, is very very strong, um, and it's best exemplified or has been in the past. We'll see how things unfold with tornado shot, but if you can get this on, um, people prefer them on uh, dex gloves uh, so that they can also get su suppression. So like silk silk glove bases are, are typically the the most expensive, um, but the uh, uh, the one, I forget the name of the base, but the one that has uh, projectile damage on it as a base, those are expensive as well. Um, all, I saw the hybrid ones, so like Worm Scale uh, is an expensive one, Dragon Scale and stuff like that. Um, this, Regardless if you decide to, uh, you know, do this for profit, this is actually a really good thing to grab. Like running temples early on, running temples at any stage is always good. So, so are Bestiary. Um but the, the temple, you can gear yourself quite quite quickly with, actually. Like, if you go in temple, there's certain rooms that can give you minus mana gear. If you can't find Elray on shit, you can get, like, you can get mana, uh, like, mana gained on hit rings, right? Instead of having to get, like, shaper ones, or if you have mana sustain issues, especially now that they got rid of the reduced mana cost stuff. Um, you can also get, um, uh, as we talked about, the weapons with Tyrannical and, and all of that. 
and your gems double corrupted and your double you can double corrupt unique items and you can get a sacrificial garb which you can then split because you can get the aziri in there and you can get the boss kill which drops a door and frags uh you know there's just so many things that you can do in there but um there's a lot of like early stage gear pieces like it's not usually when you get higher gear levels people don't typically have much resistances on their gear people tend to uh you know prioritize higher value suffixes like uh you know chaos res or attributes or multi or things like that and then they get their uh, all res elsewhere often through like a flask or an aura or their tree um what was i just saying oh my god i blinked Oh yeah, the uh, the temple. Uh, the the worst case scenario, all of them have T one fire on them or T one resistance. Sorry. So regardless of what role you get on, like the chill increases damage or lightning or fire, you're getting a T one resistance out of it. Uh, you can always split those gloves too. By the way, guys, if you want to isolate, let's say the damage modifier, or if the if the gloves if you pick up a pair of gloves, they have uh, six mods on them. Let's say, all right, and you can't put a crafted mod on there, or you can't do like fist of cold conversion bench craft or whatever it is. You can just split those suckers and put whatever it is you want. Um, but that's a pretty easy way. And I've actually been selling those through the course of the league. All right, that was number 37. Number 38, 60 rings can be traded for a lore weave six link. This is a, a way to get a six link cheap. Um, lore weaves, uh, if you, sorry, that's turning in 60 unique rings. Doing so will give you a six link, six link lore weave, uh, which has pretty much pretty universal stats. Um, like the benefits that people can experience from lore weave are quite high. Um, so lore weave will always have the six link, and then it has eight to twenty four attributes, uh, uh, ten to thirty six fizz damage to attacks. 60 global crit chance, 50 flat ES, 60 flat life, 50 flat mana, 30 flat, or sorry, 30 uh, IIR rarity, 50% increased damage, and it gives you 78% max res, right? So all you have to do for that, that you just buy, you know, you can run like a, a ring uh, harvest beast, or you could just buy, you know, two elk rings off the trade side, or just pay attention well, when you're mapping or whatever. Um, this is a really good, this is not like a couple of years ago. This is something that like I would sort of religiously go after at the beginning of the league because it's like, basically free to get and it's pretty much good for every build. I've found the pace of the game and the pace of like league starts is, is increased uh, dramatically in particular because mirror crafting is no longer really a skill thing. Um, there's still obviously skill to it, but it's you know, once you know what you're doing, it's more of a brute force, get the currency kind of thing now because of Hinecora's locks. And that just, uh, that puts a really major, major, like, time constraint or time window on when you can make meaningful crafts, especially because TFT is, uh, you know, they have amalgamate the currency and efforts of such a large group, plus maybe uh, do other illicit things. Um, so, you know, I, the past couple leagues, I haven't really had the time to, to gather up 60 rings in an organized fashion to put that, that uh, they will sell for a couple of divs. And, but even if you're not selling them, they're, they're a great piece that can carry you well into late tier maps or whatever it is, uh, introductory content you're doing. Uh, all right. Number 39. Uh, actually, they're, they're not terrible either for uh, transcendence builds because uh, it, it makes it 78 all res always regardless. So the minus 15 max res from that uh, is, uh, is nullified. All right, number 39, almost 10 to go. League items uh, are always underpriced early. People don't know how to use them optimally. Oh, yeah, that's this is like, if you want something that is a 100% guarantee, like, and has never, not once, in my entire time playing PoE, ever not been the case, anything related to the league, people will not know how to use it right away, and that ignorance will cause people to, like, sell it for less than it's worth, or cheaper than it will be worth once people do find out how it works, simply because they want to go with the they want to go with the comfort of doing something that they're used to, right? Like literally, it does not matter if you were to take a scale, like an arbitrary scale of one to ten, and uh, rank every league, right? Like some leagues are like let's say Lake of Clonder is on the bottom and it's a two, um, and like uh, I don't know what's a the Sentinel was like a nine, right? It does not matter if it's a two league or a nine league. The reality is that there has never been a league where people have known how to fully optimize how that league has worked, even within the context of that league being good in the grand scheme of things, irrelevant. P 
people do not know how to optimize the league currency on the onset of a league and it will always 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 go up because eventually there will be someone who will make a youtube video or a reddit post about hey guys did you know the league mechanic could do this and from that point forward it will go up and then at the end of the league there's a good chance it'll get removed from the game and so it'll also go up then now how fast that process happens where it appreciates is a little bit more anyone's guess it depends on what the league mechanic is but if you want something to just dump some money and you got some superfluous currency and you're not sure what you will never go never go wrong early on with league currency or whatever you know league items uh, exist at the time Whew. sorry all right we're in our final 10 Temple is a good place to get minus mana and mana gained on hit jewelry if you are struggling to find uh, an Elrion craft. We already went over that. Coward's Trial is a very good place to get item level bases, uh, as is Oba's. If you uh, are able to jump in, um, people often will give away spots on uh, Global 820. Or uh, uh, if you do you do what I suggested earlier with the Primal Crush Claws in your Kyrak missions, you'll also see... Um, because Kyra can give the unique maps. You'll also see Obas in that there. Um, that, but if you do get access to one, make sure you pick up as many bases as you can. Because uh, you can sell them for like 10, 20, 30 C sometimes in the first couple of days. Like I-86 spine bows and uh, some flasks and, and whatnot. That they can get actually pretty crazy money in a relative, relative sense. But also just having them for your own sake too. Just to be able to craft on, especially early on. Uh, is a really big asset. So Coward's Trial and uh, Obas, those are great. Uh, Ferric Tiger Alpha and Hybrid, uh, Fenimal Hybrid and Arachnid will open portals to Feral, uh, Feral's Den and Fenimus's Lair. Uh, the capture for which, um, is usually worth more than the beast you put in. So, I'll show you what this is with a visual in the game here. Boop. So, these are the bosses that give the aspects at the bottom. Uh, there's also the, the Kratrick, uh, what are they, sorry, so Kratrick Spider Crab, Fenimal Hybrid Arachnid, Sakawan Rex, and Ferret Tiger Alpha, right? These are the beasts that you would capture in the map. If you run those beasts in the Menagerie, they will open the portals, which allow you to kill one of these bosses, uh, right? So Feral, Sakawal, uh, Fenimus, or Kratrick. And if you kill one of them, every, every time you kill one of these, it is guaranteed that you get the capture for that boss. But you will also get a unique item, also guaranteed. So like Feral's fur, the you know the sackling gloves, the the crab shield stuff, whatever it is. Um, each one of those will drop. Um, but what's funny is that these beasts, even though it's a guaranteed capture, are often double the price of these beasts because these ones, um, they, the names aren't the same as these, right? So for a lot of people, they don't associate the two of them. They just kind of go off what they see on the trade site, right? They don't actually like bridge that gap what am i actually selling it's just okay i'm gonna bottle this how much is it worth oh 10c very there's actually like a, a a large amount of people who don't bother looking to see what something does before they sell it they just look to see how much they can sell it for um and uh, this is not actually exclusive to the beginning of the league you can you can do this right pretty much throughout the the whole league but it's uh you know if you do uh if there are some uh b series uniques that are uh <clears throat> beneficial for your character like feral's fur is pretty good uh it's a good way to get that stuff as well but uh if not uh you can a sell the uniques and b you can just run these and then bottle the boss and sell the boss and there's often a pretty big margin there uh boo -boo, upwards of uh two to three x sometimes okay primal rex matriarchs so this is one that i run all the time uh this league they changed it so that uh primal rex matrix it might have been last league they changed it actually but either way they changed it so that primal rex matriarchs now give a synthesis unique map and those synthesis unique maps are all equally weighted so that's rewritten twisted augmented altered right those are the four and then also cortex all of them are equally weighted 20 percent chance for each if you go look at primal rex matriarchs usually uh especially like right on the first few days they will be the same price as like the rewritten, twisted, augmented, and altered uh, later on, right? The first few days, uh, like you can get them like a tenth of the cost. However, people often like do not factor in the cortex, right? So like right now, for example, you can get uh, half a divine for each one of those maps. I actually sell them for one div when people are being lazy because I don't actually really care if I sell them. But if you're to go off like the standard market price, or not standard, that's in the league, but like the, the conventional price that they sell for, uh in ta in uh affliction about half a divine uh so like you do four those four uh would account for two divines of value right or if you divide those four by four again it would be 
0.5 dips per, obviously. Add in Cortex, which is four divines each, right? Now that four goes to six. All of a sudden, every um, sack of wine, or sorry, every uh, primal rex, right? Six divided by five is 1.2 divines. That means the real value of a primal rex is 1.2 divines, not, you know, the 40 chaos, right? But often they will be a 40 chaos. And uh, th those are great as well because um, the, uh, first of all, uh, they got rid of all the different sources of synthesis maps. I can't remember the exact wording of it, but I know that it's much harder to get Cortex now. Um, I think it's also more difficult to get th that. Um, they didn't, there's like, I, I went through to check several times. There is no change to Primal Rex Matriarchs. Um, there's also a divination card. I can't remember the name of it, but that will give a unique uh, synthesis map. And uh, it should work the exact same way as Primal Rex does with respect to Cortexes too. Every five would give one uh, on average. Uh, but yeah, there's no patch notes about uh, Primal Rex Matriarch being changed. So uh, that's, you know, maybe we'll probably fly under the radar as well. Um, because, uh, you know, with Cortex uh, having to, again, I can't, I can't remember how it was exactly implemented, but I, I do know that, that there are lower uh, lower spawn rates now, and especially early because of the the massive amount of demand for synthesis items amongst the mirror crafting community. A lack of co cortexes are typically where they come from. They can come from other sources, again, harvest, divination cards, etc. But uh, the majority of them that would be posted to the trade site with having a mirror crafter buy one because it's got you know one of the three good mods on it, the majority of those would be coming from cortex. So having less people run that is somewhat counterproductive, but it's also presents an opportunity if you do want to uh, and you know do want to do cortexes or the maps in general, but. Primal Rex Matriarch, I think, will be one of the best ways, if not the only way, to really do so consistently. All right, that's number 43. Six to go. Running Sacred Blossoms will often net even uh, net even or a small profit if you sell the Sacred Life Force. So, yeah, Sacred Blossom, go run it, kill Oshabi, you get a Sacred Life Force. The Sacred Blossom is often cheaper than the Sacred Life Force. All right, even though it guarantees it every time. And... You also have a chance at Shaco. There's a divination card that gives an elevated um, influence item. And then there's the staff and the gloves. And there's one other unique item, claw maybe. Um, but uh, yeah, it's basically worst case scenario. Even if they are the same price, you know, you get a unique plus the, whatever. Um, you know, you can run these like, especially early, sorry, worth noting. There will be a much like, since they have come out, the first couple of days, there are like, there is a big gap. Like off, later on, it tends to even out. Uh, I've seen situations, though, where, like, the Sacred Life Force sells for, like, two divs. The Sacred Blossom was, like, 60 chaos. And they, they literally take, like, 20 seconds. So it's like, uh, yeah, you can make some crazy money on those, depending on the disparity between the two. Plus, that's not even accounting for, like, the Shakos and things that you could be getting. All right, number 45. Chances and Chromes and Orbs of Horizon are very valuable. Um... For the few, first few days, fusing can be traded one to one for chance. We already mentioned that earlier. Shaper rings. Uh, when harvest to reforge influence is done uh, on a strong base. Uh, wait. Oh, sorry. Uh, so shaper rings is saying uh, if you find an influence uh, base uh, that's like sorry, if you find an influence ring that's on a very good base but not a very good influence, um, or if you decide to manually uh, put a conqueror's exalted orb onto one. You can do reforge uh, influence, uh, as we've mentioned a few times now. Uh, but on rings in particular, getting shaper rings are quite good because those have uh, mods that can't be gone elsewhere. Like um, uh, life gained on hit per... Sorry, life gained on spell hit is the one that comes to mind, as well as uh, a variety of different curse on hit mods. Um, but those ones in particular are quite easy to craft. And as well, if you use the meta mod, can't roll caster mods, you can, uh, you can actually limit to uh, craft like basically perfect rings. Uh, while limiting like there's like four mods that are desirable life gain on hit with uh, spells mana gained on hit with spells curse on hit uh cast speed maybe there's one other spell like anyways you can get like four caster mods on there and basically make a perfect ring that can give you full sustain quite easily um but also it's one of the more valuable base types combine it with hunters too uh just check poe ninja but it's the same tech basically we mentioned previously um with uh, the belt and the boots. Uh, this one specifically, though, I wanted to point out was the life gain on hit with spells and mana gain on hit with spells in particular now that they nerfed 
the flask. <clears throat> um, number 47, ooh, home stretch. I will probably have a trouble, trouble talking tomorrow. Garish power is undervalued early and is an easy way to get inspired learning, unnatural instinct, etc. Garish power is a divination card that will give you a unique jewel. I actually alluded to this earlier on. Um, for a very long time, it was basically useless because there were so many unique jewels and so many of them were trash. You can see it literally just says jewel. However, uh, a few leagues ago, I can't remember how many it was now, like four maybe, they overhauled the unique jewel system, and now the vast majority of them are actually quite strong, especially the first couple of days, things like Unnatural Instinct, Inspired Learning, um, the Stun one, and the, uh, what else is there, Storm Shroud, and blah, blah, blah. Anyways, uh, oh, Lion, uh, Lion Eyes. These guys can be worth uh, multiple divines each. Um, oh, um, Intuitive Leap as well. Um, and the garish powers are often quite overlooked. So that's one I would definitely take a, keep your eyes peeled for. Number 48. By flipping your gear priorities and working backwards, you'll be purchasing items at their highest supply and lowest demand. These will appreciate. By buying the same staples as everyone else, you'll be buying depreciating assets as they are at their all-time highest demand and lowest supply. We already went over this extensively earlier on, so I won't, uh, I won't repeat myself on there. But uh, you guys probably have a good grasp of that now. All right, number 49, find out what your strong or desired timeless jewels are early and run trade alerts. Many of the first ones that come onto market will have no baseline price to compare to, and due to the vast amount of seeds, many will be arbitrarily um, priced and at times, as a result, mispriced. So things like uh, double damage, timeless jewels, um, you know, the uh, the Maximus one or whatever, the, the green one in the middle, with the aura effect uh, is a really popular one. I mean, you got you guys know what timeless jewels are, but my point is there though that like uh, the ones that are quite good, right? Most people, when they price something, they look on trade, right? Now the first few days, there's not going to be that many people doing timeless stuff. So basically, what I'm stipulating here is that the first people who are getting these jewels are just going to have to like, unless they're you know, incredibly. And then to be fair, piece or. Uh, Memory, uh, sorry, memory. Um, fuck, you can tell I'm tired. Eh? Uh, what are they called? Five way, five way runners. Um, five way runners are often actually fairly veteran players that do it over and over and over again, but you're still going to have people that are not falling into that camp. And, uh, because the jewels have so many seeds, right? The, the first people that list them are not going to have a baseline to compare that to. So it's not like they're going to see, oh, this is actually worth 200 divs. Likely they're going to, you know, frame it within the contextual reference of her, the overall economy at the, ta at the time. Uh, and obviously the early league, that is rather cheap. Uh, even throughout, the, like throughout the league, you'll see this, um, you know, especially with Lethal Prides, <laughs> where people don't know, um, you know, like either don't know about... Uh, the timeless jewel calculator just don't bother to look um and especially if they're running hundreds and hundreds of uh you know timeless uh, or sorry five ways it's like you know do you really want to price check like 900 different you know what i mean it's just there's, there's lots of reasons i suppose the causality is not really relevant keep your eyes out for those there are some that are very very expensive again usually timeless jewel or uh lethal prides and they often will have a lot of double damage on them Whew. Oh my god, we're on 50. Okay. The last one, boys. The very, very last one. Whoop. Thank god I didn't do 100. Uh, originally, I was going to do 100 strategies. I thought I was just going to rail these off like bullet points, but it, it appears that is a skill set I don't have. Because <laughs> even when they're written as bullet points, I find a way to, to, to go off. Anyways, number 50... Vivid Abrax are often posted in abundance and can give Shaper, Elder, or Conqueror maps at a fraction of the cost, and often they are posted on mats. This is another one that comes from Harvest Beast. It's the little yellow scorpion. Uh, when you kill it, it will give you a Harvest, or sorry, a Shaper map, a, you know, Redeemer, Warlord, uh, Hunter, or, or um, Crusader orb, or a Crusader um, um, influence map, or it will give you an Elder map. Um, especially early on, these are very, very good because there's obviously just not an abundance of those. Um, and it's an easy way to get the boss kills. Um, like you can start, as I meant, you can run the memories on low tier maps, right? The tier one maps, and you can start getting access to the Abrax and the Abrax will start, will give you like tier 14 plus maps to do, uh, 
you know, Elder Shaper and uh, uh, Conqueror's on. So it's a good way to kind of progress yourself through that. But also, I mean, Conqueror maps, like when I think of their price, that most comes to mind, they usually kind of settle out around 30, 40 chaos. Um, due to the mass amount, like the, the crazy, crazy abundance of in which I've killed Harvest Beasts, I have very firsthand intimate knowledge of this. Uh, Aberrax, I usually sell for the first, in the first couple of days, I sell them usually for five to eight chaos. And I, I know as well, because I just don't have the time to do them because I'm selling stuff so much, but Conqueror maps are usually 30 or 40 C. So, I mean, just even if it were like, it is a one in three to hit the Conqueror map. Uh, usually the elders are like 25 or 20. And then the shapers are usually a little bit cheaper, like at uh, like 12 or 15. I'm thinking through the past couple of leagues. But uh, the Aberrant, like, it's impossible to lose money on them, right? The Conqueror ones are usually the most expensive, but uh, impossible to lose money. So Aberrants are great for that. In fact, pretty much every Harvest piece is great. Um, the Crush Claw, again, providing that new thing. Um, you know, we've got the new belt in there, the Void, whatever it is. Um, normally, I would have, uh, you know, a... Uh, uh, unlike my webcam, I'd have a colorful statement here. I am absolutely exhausted. Uh, I've been working uh, really hard, actually. Um, I know that that maybe doesn't translate so much to you guys. Just you know, maybe don't, like uh, not that you like overtly disrespect me, but the, you know, playing video games to some people just doesn't qualify as a job or whatever. But uh, with the league coming out, I've been putting in like literally like 18, 19 hour days. Uh, I'm at the foot end of one of those right now. So um, I know that the purpose of this video was to uh, help you guys with the next league. I did want to make it a little bit more concise. I often say this as an exit in pretty much every video I've ever made. Hopefully today it could be a little bit more, um, maybe not understanding, but like empathetic to the fact that uh, it's, I've had a, a lot of a lot of work to do over the past few days. And um, I got locked out of my apartment last night <laughs> because I forgot to bring my keys outside. So uh, I, I didn't get to sleep at home. And then uh, uh, today I lost my internet. So it's a little bit frustrating on that end. But I'm glad that I sat down and got this done. I also, because I could not go on the internet for so long, I made the dopest, the dopest um, cover photo. Or what are they called? Uh, what are they called on YouTube? Not cover photos. Uh, alt no, not alt arts. God damn, thumbnails. The thumbnail, I am very proud of myself. Nobody ever comments on my thumbnails, but but you know what? You've heard it, you've heard it here first, all right? I'm, I'm fucking, I'm fishing for compliments, boys. I want some feedback on that goddamn thumbnail. I spent like four hours like shading in like different kinds of yellow <laughs> waiting for my internet to go back online. Um, and I, as I drag on even after a two hour video. All right, let me try and be concise here. Thank you for watching. I hope that this uh, has helped those of you um, who are looking for such things. Um, I can't tell you the exact mixture of these things that I do, but I, I can tell you that I do every one of them and I do every one of them every single league, obviously to varying capacities and obviously with consideration for the market um, and the, the you know corresponding markets around it um, in terms of viability. Um, I do have lots more on a list. If you guys like this video, please uh, consider subscribing to the channel, um, maybe sharing it with a friend or a guild or, or like throwing it a like. Um, you know, I do, unfortunately, uh, I am a, uh, a, va a vapious vacuous human robot much like every other person on youtube and you know i live for the metrics baby those analytics are you know where them lits at baby give me them lit liddies all right now uh but joking aside yeah i mean they've uh th these kinds of videos are inherently counterproductive to my bottom line in the league itself um there's always opportunities i, I always stream my gameplay anyway it's not like i'm a, I'm a hyper uh, um reserve person or like i keep my stuff close to my vest with terms of strategies i feel like i'm pr pretty open book um i've never bothered not bothered but i've never laid out what i was planning on doing or some ideas i had prior to a league uh, obviously even one person in here doing the same thing that i am trying to do um as i'm trying to do it is like that can have a you know a radical shift on that market so um i will likely likely struggle a little bit more than i would normally getting getting off the getting off the uh, starting line but uh it's not a big deal um you know what i've realized over time in the game is that uh there's always going to be inefficiencies if people flood towards one thing the thing that they're flooding away from has all of a sudden probably become one of them right um the game the game has like boom and bust cycles the market does too 
player behaviors and player preferences change constantly. And uh, a lot of the time, it's, there's just like an element of uh, not laziness, but you know, this is the only the only exhaustible resource in PoE is time. And uh, sometimes people just value theirs differently than you do. And if you can find something where you know what you enjoy is something they hate, and something they enjoy is something you hate, that's a you know a friendship made in heaven, or at the very least, a a, a partner to trade with made in heaven. And uh, so, with that uh, with that being said, guys. I, uh, I'm happy to make more of these videos. Um, I know it dragged on and we're approaching two hours now for this video. I am going to post it in full. Um, I do think that there's some good information in there and I, and I hope that you're able to extract value from it. Um, for those of you who are looking for it, uh, I didn't want to, uh, I mean, if I had sat down and actually did these crafts and showed you how to do them, blah, 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 this probably would have been like a 12 hour video <laughs> in hindsight. Um, for the guys that are Patreon members, if you have any specific questions for any one of these, let me know and I will write you a step-by-step -step guide, the Tier 3 patrons. Um, I, a big shout-out and a big thank you again so much to, to everyone that has signed up for the Patreon. Um, in fact, I uh, in the first three days of it, um, the combined amount of uh, income that I had from YouTube and Twitch over a three-month period, well, actually, not, maybe not, no, sorry, not a three-month, two-month two period of both Twitch and uh, pay, or sorry, Twitch and uh, YouTube, first three days of Patreon, and uh, it's it just it's nice having like a separate uh, system for it as well as a separate Discord and blah blah blah. Just it feels like a fresh start, and uh, it's it's super gratifying for me to to see that so many of you chose to support me in that and ha have such su ha have <coughs> had such nice things to say as well. So thank you uh, very much for that. And uh, if uh, if you are someone who um, you know, thinks that there's some value to you, you know, you, you want to get a bit better on that stuff, you want some access to uh, some higher level guides here, or if you are somebody that uh, really wants to kind of deep dive this league and um, follow along with what I'm doing as it's happening with access to my notes and access to my data and all that stuff, um, you can check out in the video description, there'll be a link to it, the Patreon, and uh you know, appreciate anyone who uh, chooses to go above and beyond like that because it's a lot. It's what allows me to continue doing this stuff. <clears throat> um, the uh, they'll be posted here. You know, we've got different types of calculators which will profit for you. Calculate the profit for you. Um, uh, one of the things I recently posted, which has actually never been shared before, um, was the how many what the weights are of synthesis mods. Uh, I started off with rings, so not like which ones are the rarest, like. X mod takes X amount of vultures. So first time I've ever actually shared that, which I'm a little anxious about. But uh, anyways, that's posted now, as well as a bunch of different other things. And uh, I figured just going forward, um, obviously, I will still make YouTube videos and I will obviously still stream and all of that thing. But um, in terms of all of the stuff I collect, well, you know, all the underlying things that supports these videos, uh, they kind of just sort of sit around at the for the time being in like notepad documents. Sometimes I just... They sit on Google Doc or whatever, and uh, you know, once I I learn something, I kind of just absorb it. But um, there's a lot of value in those two. Um, and we started a Discord server, which is kind of like uh, uh, obviously I'm going to share things there for the respective tiers of the patrons. But uh, the people there within, it's kind of seems like a little micro community emerging out of that, and people seem to be helping each other too. So that's all very encouraging stuff. Um, and uh, again, yeah, it, deepest uh, gratitude to everyone that's. Um, uh, you know, giving me a second shot at a dream, so to speak, because uh, I wouldn't have been able to continue without uh, without your guys' help there. So thank you very much. And uh, I hope that uh, this video, um, you know, uh, can, can serve as somewhat a, a small token of my gratitude. And if you guys want to see more of this, I do have a much longer list. Perhaps next time I will break it down into 25 strategies per since this lasted so long, which I apologize for. I've never pumped out this many in a single video. Um, is there anything else I need to cover? Probably not. At this point, I suppose it's not super important. <laughs> no, it is still super important. All right, let's, let's, I'm just trying to think of a good outro here or if there's anything else. I, I am very, very tired. I, I think I said what needs to be said. I apologize for the scattered nature. I, uh, anyway. All right, guys. Uh, it's, uh, so now it's, what is it? Tuesday, Tuesday a.m., Tuesday a.m., Tuesday morning, 2 a.m., um, so like I haven't gone to bed yet from Monday, 
but I believe Wednesday tomorrow is when the leagues merge. I will have some stuff and some thoughts there at the, at the merger. I will be streaming tomorrow. I'm going to need a very good sleep first. Um, but that means that we've got the league starting in uh, just a couple of days. Um, I can kind of feel myself maybe getting a little bit sick. So hopefully that doesn't kick in. But I am very, very excited. And uh, uh, one thing I do want to not caution about, but obviously, um, you know, I run a, like a, a multiple hundred person guild. Uh, there's 7,000 people in the Discord, the YouTube. Um, I do all of my own mirror crafting, all of my own mirror services, all of my own trading, all that shit, right? Um, and then now the Patreon stuff too. Uh, at, at League Start, uh, since, you know, performance wise, uh, it's not like I'm kind of just like a commentator on this stuff, right? Uh, it's going to be rather difficult for me to make uh, to make videos and, and whatnot. So I, I'd like to be able to provide as much value for you guys as I can prior to the league start. So if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, ideas, or things you that are that you're desperate to know, um, there's probably what three days now until the league releases. Um, I'm, I'm more than happy to, to kind of put things together. Obviously it's not like I'm not going to make videos once the league starts, but for probably the first week, maybe like five to 10 days kind of thing. Definitely probably not before day five. Um, it's unlikely that I'll post a video just because I, I you know, I'm going to have so much stuff to do, um, at that exact time. And I will also of, of course be streaming so you can follow along there. All right. Now this has been like a 15 minute outro. I can make a whole damn new other YouTube video. I'm sure some of you are probably getting pissed off. Thank you for watching guys. I uh, appreciate you all. Um, and uh, God bless. Uh, hope y'all are having a great week. Had a great weekend. I'm looking forward to seeing you back in Ray class. Take care, guys.